Hey everybody, welcome to Troubles in Otari, a Pathfinder beginner box adventure. I am the GM, you can call me Jim, or Jim Jam, or James, or whatever. I'm the GM. I'm going to be running a band of soon-to-be mighty heroes through Paizo's excellent Pathfinder beginner box adventure, exploring the ins and outs of the incredible tabletop role-playing game. The goal of the show is to learn how, to, how Pathfinder works, have a lot of fun doing it, and tell a great story with some people that we are going to meet right now. Why don't we go ahead and see everybody who is here? It's not just me, despite what you see in front of you. It's a lot of other people, too. People who are about to come. There they are. There's all the other people. Hello, everyone. Hi. Uh, this is our my, my cast of players. Um, Katie, why don't you? Who are you? Hi. Where can I find you on the internet? Oh, Why are everywhere. You everywhere. <laughs> um, yeah. Hey, everyone. I'm Katie Wilson. Uh, I do a lot of streaming uh, on my own YouTube channel, Legend of Katie, like Zelda, but Katie. Um, and you may know me uh, from uh, the Dragons and Things Network, network uh, where I do a lot of uh, role playing and, and TTRPGs. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, Gabe. Same question for you. Who are you? Where can we find you? What are you doing here? Hi, I am Gabe. Uh, you can find me on Twitch, Twitter, pretty much anywhere else at Gabe James Games. I am a cosplayer, designer, voice actor. I've uh, written on one of the upcoming Paizo Pathfinder books. Um, I'm making a goblin dating sim. I stay pretty busy. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Michelle, you spoke up, so now it's your turn. Tell the class. Hello. Hello, everybody. Uh, hi, I'm Michelle and Bradley. I'm so excited to be here and play Pathfinder and like learn how to play it better than I do currently. Um, you can find me on lots of uh, tabletop RPG shows. Um, I'm over at, uh, I was over at uh, uh, Hyper RPG, Saving Throw, Q Times, uh, I've done d, &D stuff everywhere on the internet. Um, and I also do a, 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 a deep dive video game show over at Total Nerd on YouTube. And that's super fun. And yeah. Uh, I'm so happy to be here and learn about the Scoblin dating sim. I mean, Pathfinder. <laughs> I mean, Pathfinder. If we're lucky, both. Yeah. Xander, you're up, bud. Yeah, I'm Xander Genre. You may know me as Ricky Huckster from Relics and Rarities or X from Vampire the Masquerade LA by Night or from a billion other RPG streams uh, that I've done. I also stream here on Twitch on my own channel at Xanderific. Uh, and Star Trek, that's a thing that I like too. So <laughs> I'm just naming things now. Hey, but I'm very fine. excited. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, I am very excited to have you guys. I, I've played with some of you before on some games. Uh, Katie, I'm looking at you. Uh, others of you I've seen play me. on games. Uh, so I'm super excited to actually get a chance to, to hang out and run a game for you. Um, I'm excited to dive into the beginner box. And so without further ado, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to dive into this beginner box adventure. For all of you out there, as we're playing through this adventure, I want you to know that you can get the, the Pathfinder beginner box right now on paizo.com. You can order it. You can have this, this very adventure. You can play through it. Uh, I will also let you know, and if you are thinking about playing through or running this adventure, um, I'm not gonna reveal all the secrets from the box. We're gonna run through the adventure, but I'm gonna leave a couple of stones unturned so that even if you wanna uh, you know, play through this adventure at home, you're still gonna get plenty of surprises and awesome content that you will not be expecting from the beginner box. With all of that said, I think it's time we start this. In the center of the inner sea rises the Isle of Kortos, a legendary island with a legacy of living gods, mighty heroes, and thriving hubs of civilization. In places like Atari, a simpler life can be found. Founded by retired pathfinders long ago, this seaside town does not boast the hustle and bustle of Absalom to the east or Diabel to the west, but there is still plenty of mystery, wonder, and even horror to be found for those who go looking. Even now, a menace awakens beneath the town. In the coming days, the people of Otari will need heroes to carry the torch of its founders lest this rising darkness leave it in ruins. The troubles in Otari are just beginning. Ingot. It is early morning, and you're just finishing up breakfast at the Rowdy Rockfish, a surprisingly quiet spot despite the name. 
when you see a familiar face wander through the front door, look around for a moment, spot you, and make a beeline right for the table. Gabe, who is it we see walking into this tavern? Uh, it's an elf with, you see, long braided hair underneath a blue hood. There seems to be a mask on their face, but they've lowered it at this point. There is a wrap around their arm. It almost looks like there might be either a burn or some markings underneath it. And there is a dagger at their side. And they've they've got like a smirk on their face almost as they're looking around. Uh, they, they pass over a figure, but then they still look around the rest of the patrons, looking to see what people are drinking, looking at people who seem to be a little drunker than some of the others. For, you know, entirely pure reasons. <laughs> entirely pure reasons. Well, this time in the morning, especially at a place like this, there aren't too many people getting drunk. You see that most of the people here are probably staying in some of the rooms above. Uh, they're all having uh, a quiet breakfast. There are one or two grizzled looking, probably uh, uh, fishers sitting at the bar who appear to be nursing something that's probably just a bit stronger than the juices and milks everybody else has gone through. But then I'll I'll I'll, I'll 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 bring myself back together. No, no, you can't do that yet. You got to hold on. You got to. You have a job to do. And then I'm gonna look for my companion. I'm gonna look for Ingot. Uh, you do indeed spot Ingot. He looks like he's just finishing up. Um, Ingot, tell us a little bit about who our friend Thee sees. Yes, uh, Ingot is a dwarf that is seated at this like bench of this wooden table. And you look down and you can see that he has a bowl in front of him of uh, a plain soup of some sort that is empty. And there seem to be two stones at the bottom of this now damp bowl. He brushes aside some of his uh, like unkempt white hair. Uh, and it is, there's a short white beard as well. And he's just covered in like rocks and crystals attached to chains and things. Um, and he's got these like bright purple robes on that are just covered uh, again in, in stones. He turns over the bowl onto the table and you can see as he lifts it up that there is a bit of moisture left on these two stones. He looks it over and pulls out a book, makes a quick note and then closes it and says to himself, Ingot is going to have an auspicious day. And sees Thee. Ah, Ingot sees a friend already. Gonna, gonna just walk up and take it. Ingot, are you doing that thing where you talk to yourself again? Ingot is predicting how the future will go. What did Ingot you say? is looking forward to this day. Thee? Is looking forward to making some gold, potentially. Does Ingot agree to do so? Ingot does. Thieves' ways are magic in its own right, and Ingot is excited to study these magics. Okay, I'm tired of this bit. I don't want to do it anymore. I'm going to pull out a piece of paper. Ingot, I found something that was listed. Uh, let, let, me, let me read it for you. Urgent... Um, I'm tired of doing this voice. No one's paying attention, right? Okay, whatever. It doesn't matter. Urgent notice, looking for adventurers at Otari Fishery. This is a paid opportunity for someone willing to face potentially not horrifying monsters. See Family Tandervale for more info. And, and Ingot, remember, my name here is Thievery, and I'm from the South, okay? Right. Ingot understands when Thee is not using Thee's true voice. Yes. And Thee understands that Ingot doesn't say the word I. We have an understanding. Got it. Perfect. Um, between you and me, I think it might be better, though, if we don't do this by ourselves. Personally, I enjoy having someone get hit in front of me. And Ingot, you're pretty spongy. But Ingot is confused. You said these are not horrifying or dangerous monsters. Perhaps... A rodent or a, uh, some small bug? Sure. Ing yes, Ingot, you're... Uh, you know what? I forgot how smart you were, Ingot. Hmm. Ingot is a wizard. Ingot sure is something. <laughs> well, All right. 
Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so knowing that you both have to head to the Otari fishery uh, to learn more about this potentially lucrative and definitely not dangerous or horrifying <laughs> uh, mission, uh, we will we will check in with some other people who also have gotten news of something happening in town. Uh, Waverly, today is much like any other day for you. You waken, you thank Saren Ray for the gift of daylight, you put on your vestments, you head into the Dawnflower Library where you continue exploring the wealth of knowledge locked within dusty tomes, precious scrolls, and etched tablets curated and maintained by the acolytes of the, this temple and library. As you settle in to look over some old faded maps of now flooded tunnels beneath the city, a shadow falls over you. A great voice calls out, shattering the quiet peace of the library. A voice you recognize as you turn to see Michelle. Who do? Who does she turn to see? Uh, she turns and sees the coolest person that she knows in this town. In fact, <laughs> her mentor of sorts, a person who she looked up to a lot, even though maybe for the reasons that I, I think are different than what she, they really are. <laughs> um, so uh, she sees uh, Gristle, and uh, Gristle, uh, his full name is Gristle Vanderrift Jr. And uh, everyone in the town sort of knows about Gristle and uh, Gristle's desire to become famous and heroic and known throughout all lands, but lives in its fishing village and um, whose parents are uh, fish picklers. So it's sort of like a, you know, trying to, Fake it till you make it thing. Um, I'm six feet tall. I'm dressed in a gaudy shimmering cape uh, with silver armor that casts a blinding reflection even in this library where there's only just a little bit of candlelight. It's very, very shiny and I love it a lot. Um, and I have a great sword at my back and I believe that is a good description of Gristle. So, Waverly, um, tell us a little bit about who who is sitting at the in, in this library. Oh yes, uh, nose definitely stuck in a book. Um, you see a, a young, college-aged uh, uh, girl. Uh, she looks just like me, ironically. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, she she kind of wears like a little satchel, and she uh, probably has a, a lot of books in her in her satchel um, of all different things um and she's currently reading one uh as um gristle approaches her so gristle uh the exciting news today is that this you you have spotted an opportunity uh one that will finally give you the chance to show this town what a fantastic heroic figure you will <laughs> cut uh, as you grow in power and stature uh, because you have also found the, the very same notice that Fee had uh, posted up. Uh, it does look like a one Tamily Tanderville is seeking out heroes to help her with some kind of a problem at the fishery. The details are probably not very important. What's important is that this is your moment. And Waverly could probably help you out. <laughs> Hello, young Wimble B. What's your name again? I keep forgetting it. <laughs> Waverly, it's nice to see you again. You did startle me there. <laughs> um, yes, Beverly, thank you for uh, joining me for, uh, actually, thank you for just staying still so I could find you more easily because you're always in this stupid place. Listen, we've got some real actual work to do, so uh, let's uh, chop chop. Tamily Tenderville has a look is looking for some heroes to do some things that are heroic and you know you said you wanted to see some action and I certainly do as well so uh put down that stinky weird book and let's get out of here. Oh this is a marvelous book um not stinky at all um perhaps I can share its contents with you Oh later. my god please don't do that I don't want to know what's in that book. <laughs> oh okay perhaps later um yes no. For, oh, okay. Um, for my thesis, um, I do need to know. Um, do you do you know what kind of action we're going to be facing? No, but it's going to be glorious, no matter what it is, because I'm going to be there. Waverly pulls out her notebook, so she kind of like uh, folds away her her book she was reading and pulls out a notebook, and she writes down um, glorious um, action. Yes, yes. Um, now. Yeah, yeah. Right now. I mean, you're not doing anything in here anyway, so let's just go. Oh, I'm I'm doing Sarenray, Sarenray's work. Um, it's 
quite important and oh i'd love to fill you in and tell you a little bit about saren ray and no i don't really want to know uh, you keep trying to tell me things and i say, say no but you try anyway and i, I don't really oh. appreciate it so uh let's go intern yes and and so i i picture her just kind of like running out the door and and waverly is just kind of like grabbing all of her things and like just trying to shove it into her into her satchel and make sure she has everything and she's kind of like running like arms full of books out the door behind gristle you can leave those uh, books they're really not important i keep telling oh, you this no i think we'll need them <laughs> so you gather up what you can uh and rush after gristle who is uh, uh really hastily making her way towards glory and adventure, as she claimed. Um, you both arrive at the fishery just a few minutes later to see, to see a short, red-headed woman with a mess of freckles over her nose talking to a dwarf and an elf who looks similarly geared up and ready for adventure. It would seem that you were not the only ones responding to this notice. Uh, what do you do? Oh, are these the other um, party members? Uh, Ingot and uh, Thee, at this point, you you hear a voice behind you, you look and you see uh, somebody in just blindingly polished armor mm -hmm. standing there, a massive sword on her back, and a, a woman with a whole mess of books in her hands chasing after her, trying not to drop things. Ingot rushes up to, uh, to Gristle, and probably, how tall is Gristle? Crystal is about six foot tall. Six foot, okay. So he comes up to about your waist uh, and then is just in like awe of your armor. What do you use to have it polish like this? Ah, yes, hello. Um, I think your name was uh, Ingrid? That sounds right. Uh, yes, I polish it every day. I use the finest uh, waxes and polishes and I do it every night because a shiny armor is good for the soul, as they say, somewhere, surely. Yeah, but what I... if you die in it? What was that? What if you die in it? I'm never going to die. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone faces death at one point in their life. Oh, isn't that ironic? <laughs> Ingot, this one will do. Uh, this is thee. Yes. Oh, hello. Um, and Waverly's gonna kind of try to push all the books into one arm and, and just try to stretch out a hand. Uh, Waverly Kent, it's nice to meet you. You as well. How much are your books worth? Oh, um, I'm afraid probably not much. Um, yes, no they're one garbage. Matter. Oh, um, <laughs> no one seems to, uh, uh, unless you're... Uh, I have a love of ancient civilizations. Not many people are very fond of learning about our history, but um, it is a passion of mine. No, I'm, you, you got me hooked. Uh, lo lots of uh, ancient civilizations and history. They've all treasures. They've got loot. They've got, they've got things that deserve to be preserved. Oh, Isn't that yes. right, Waverly? Oh, that is absolutely correct. Yeah. Oh, I would love to share this book that I've been reading with you perhaps later, after the adventure. It would be my honor and pleasure, Waverly. Oh, I will write it down and schedule it in. Yes, I think <laughs> you and I will be great friends. Oh, I do think so. Okay, I think we found a bunch of nerds. Um, you know what, Waverly? I know you and I were, were working together. I don't know that we need these two for this particular adventure, uh, but let's check in with the the uh, quest giver as it is. Um, see how many people we need in our party. And I'll you be quietly one. introducing myself to uh, Ingot in the back as well. Hi, Waverly Kent, nice to meet you. Ingot, Ingot is pleased to meet you and is interested in your tomes as well. <gasps> to share that with you as well later. Um, and I quite look forward to working together as a group. Mm. Big one. It's never had friends before. Oh, you've never had a friend. <laughs> oh, well, we must change that. Oh, Fee looks at you hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Except, of course, Thee, who oh, comes yes. from the south, west, oh. north. The, the, the southwest that's... A little bit north to some people, sure. You know uh, what most people would call that? Well-traveled. Yes. Uh, I have been in a well before, but that's a different story. Uh, I would uh, love to hear it sometime. Big, big one with the shiny armor. Can you read? <laughs> uh, hello, yes. My name is Gristle. You do not have to call me a big one, but I do appreciate it. That's very nice of you. And is what was your name again? So oily. 
Well, hold, hold on. First of all, it's not oil. This is shimmer, shine. This is from polishing, friend. Do you polish with Gristle? Is that why you're named Gristle? No, a name's a name. And actually, I'm a junior, so my father had this name first. It's very complicated. Uh, you said your name was Thee from the southwest northeastish. Exactly. That's... He's well traveled. Yes, well traveled. And what are your two occupations, may I ask? The and uh, Ingle Ding Ding, that one. I'm I'm a trader and an entrepreneur. I'd, I'm here to negotiate deals and barter and help people get the best deal that they can possibly get. So an unemployed merchant. Okay, and how about you? Ooh. Ingot collects rocks. A uh, homeless person. Great. <laughs> um, and what are you two here to do? Also would, join an adventure. I would like to make the first roll of the session. <laughs> As Gristle is looking at Ingot, I want to <laughs> steal from Gristle. <laughs> I will uh, beat you up. <laughs> <laughs> do you have Do you have like anything like attached, like any pouches, anything? Like I had the I had the beginner's box. Uh, it recommended adventures. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, could we so, assume you have like a coin pouch or something? Yes, I have, I'm carrying one gold. I spent the rest of it on armor and shit. <laughs> I want to try and steal your one gold. <laughs> okay, okay, Jim, how do we do this? <clears throat> well, uh, we're jumping right in. <laughs> and I would like a stealth roll from Fee. And I would like a perception roll from, um, from Gristle. Okie dokie. Is a 12 plus 6 for an 18. Okay. Um, I got a dirty 21. <gasps> oh. Uh, so as you're making your way up next to Gristle, uh, you're trying to do the little bump and pass. You can just lift that coin purse right up. But uh, you can see she's already given you the stink eye and <laughs> like just takes a little step back away from you. Uh, you don't think you're going to get one over on her. This is Gristle. I'm also an accountant. Um, listen, little person. I'll have you know that I have a sixth sense about my armor. When anyone gets near it, I know immediately. And if you don't want to see the sharp end of this sword, I suggest you back up. But I can literally see the sharp end of your sword. I'm just, i trying to use an analogy is what uh, Wever Weverly was trying to teach me and it is not working out apparently, you nerds. It's anyway. diplomacy. What was that? It's called <laughs> diplomacy. It did that one. Mm-hmm. Yes. You're doing well. You haven't stabbed him yet. Yes. I'm not really enjoying this situation, and I don't really like these new people that we've met. Uh, Beverly, so we think we should continue wait, wait. on. So what was... I, I can't really hear you ever. You're just... It's fine. I'm very tall, so I can't hear anyone down there. <laughs> I like her. <laughs> um, at this point, you all see that uh, this this woman who has been standing by sort of watching all of this happen is like <laughs> raises her hands like um let me excuse 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 me are you are you all here um to help because i mean that would be great because like the more the better you know i mean i, I do have uh, uh openings available for, for all of you um it, it's fine that there's more of you uh, i just i think that would actually be maybe like better uh yes are you are you tamerly uh tenderville tender tenderville yeah. Villain. Yeah, no, I, I am, I am, I, I own the fishery, and and there's, the, like, so okay, so here's here's actually what's what's happening. Um, I think I think there's something in the basement, um, like, Ooh. like there was a huge uh portion of my stock was missing, but uh while I was trying to figure out what had happened, I I started hearing uh noises down there, and there was growling, and there was scratching, and I and I think. I, I just, I think there's something down there. And so I put up the notice and I was really hoping that you guys could like go, go down there and, and like, just check it out, right? Excuse me, Miss Tanderville, um, Waverly Kent. Um, might I ask, do you have any pets? No, no, I, I don't, I don't have any pets. Hmm, that is suspicious. Same Wait, time. Sometimes the bravest thing we can one can do is ask for help. You're being very brave now. 
Oh no, not at all. Uh, I, I I am not oh. going anywhere near there. Uh, that that's why I put out the notice. So no, no need to to talk up my bravery because I've uh, I'm definitely not going down in the basement. That is that was scary. Ingrid understands. Well, fear not. We are a group of adventurers, and we shall help you. Um, with Gristle as our leader, um, I fear that there's nothing we can't do. Well, <laughs> she's not wrong. Uh, and I suppose if these uh, two street urchins would like to also join us to make their way in life with some gold, there is some gold involved, is or not, Emily? Oh yeah, no, no, no. Sorry, I, I forgot to mention. I, I will pay each of you, uh, ten, ten gold pieces. Does that sound fair? Um, ten gold pieces each for each of you. So no need to worry about like splitting. Um, and all you have to do is take care of whatever is happening down there and find my fish. That's also important. Fish. Um, okay. The, your so your fish is like. Just floating around free form or no, what? No, no, like this is a fish, like they're, they're dead fish. They were supposed to be prepped for market. I, when uh. I went down there, I found out a large part of my stock was missing. Something uh. had broken into the basement and then I heard sounds and then I saw things and then I ran away. And that is when I posted the notice, hoping that brave people like you would go down there and, 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 and like take care of that for me. Well, you certainly have encountered at least one brave person, I would say. And then um, one person who likes to try to steal. Uh, uh, then two nerds, so I think that's a uh, good enough party f to go down there and take care of some vermin. But I'd say if you have the great gristle leading anything that you need, you'll never have to worry. Oh, it's quite nice of you to say. I'm glad you've uh, turned your opinion around from uh, me being a mark to someone that can lead you to glory, so I mean... I've learned that's... the error of my ways. Uh, the great gristle, I, s I see how much power and awareness and a perception that you have I'd follow behind you anywhere. Behind you, anywhere. Weird. Okay. I mean, I'll take it though. Great. So uh, here's the key to the basement, and uh, I'll just wait up here, and you guys can just tell me when everything's okay. Okie dokie. Well, uh, are you all ready then? Small party that I am suddenly leading. Yes. Uh, I'm just gonna turn to. Uh to her and just kind of like grab her hands. I assure you, we will get down to the bottom of this for you. You are in good hands and you are safe. Oh yeah, that's why I'm gonna be up here. I'm definitely going to be safe up here. <laughs> that I am very certain of. And I'll just be staring at Gristle now. <laughs> All right. So you've got the key to the fishery basement. Um, the front door is is open before you. Um, what do you do? I open that door, I think. Right. <laughs> Head into the fishery. Um, it smells it smells like a fishery. Uh, it's not the mm. most pleasant place in the whole world. Mm. Uh, you very quickly find a door marked for employees only. Um, Tam, you look behind you and you can see that Tamily is sort of standing in the doorway and, and she like, it's like, yeah, yeah, that, that door, that that's the one, that's the one. Um, so you put the key in the lock, it turns easily and opens, and there is now a set of basement stairs in front of you. Oh, is it dark? It is not too dark down there, no. It, it seems to be well lighted. Hmm. Okay, well, um, maybe one of you two should go first. I hear you can see in the dark a little bit. It's a little tiny bit, tiny bit dark down there, maybe? Both Ingot and Thee should be able to see in this. And Ingrid will move forward a little bit to get a better look. Sure, but, yeah. But great, um, Crystal, sorry, I if, if so I ready. hadn't mentioned, uh, it is, there is light in the, in the basement. Mm. Like you can Oh, you can Crystal see. knows this thing, yes. but is uh, still worried <laughs> okay. about the lights not working sometimes. Sure, 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 sure. Uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, are you actually going down the stairs or are you just standing and looking from where you at the top? Yeah, Ingrid will climb in and start going down the stairs. I assume Thee is coming with too. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, he'll come down after looking, Grizzle. But Grizzle, I, I think that you should be the one to really go in charge. You are the bravest and the smartest of us all. But if, if you really think so, I think that. Well, um, uh, okay, fine. You do make a good points. I am the leader. I am the leader. So, uh, out of the way. Out of the way. I Whoa. just sort of like gently push Inga <laughs> aside. <laughs> and Inga I get as smart and brave. I'm gonna lean into Ingot. 
Yes, Ingrid, but you're also small and smart. Mm-hmm. Gristle so you- seems to be about as thick as the gristle that they left sitting in the pan overnight. <laughs> Ingrid understands. Gristle. You uh, descend the creaking stairs, and now the fish, the smell of fish is quite strong. Um, The basement is full of crates and barrels, some of them smashed up, and you notice plenty of empty spaces where there should probably be more, but they now stand empty. You also can't help but notice that on the eastern wall in the room, there is a whole bunch of rubble and broken stone. Uh, It looks like there is a breach in the wall. What do you do? Hmm. Looks like whatever was down here is not here anymore. Uh, I'm going to just barrel ahead and go straight to the opening in the wall. Okay. Uh, You can see that beyond the opening, uh, like you can see just a few feet from the light that's spilling into this tunnel, Um, but it is very, very dark uh, down this tunnel. Mm. You you lose all ability to see about 10 feet in. So, uh, uh, appre- apprentice helper, oh, girl. Yes, yes. Uh, I'll follow uh, right behind Gristle and land sure. sort of right next to her. Okay. Uh, uh, Fee and Ingot, have you made yourself, are you guys in the basement at this point? Yeah, I think Ingot is okay. going to keep in Gristle's shadow as well. As she sort of lumbers in, he's trying to be with her. Okay. <laughs> so as you are all making your way over to this breach, um, that is about that time that Gristle, you begin to hear the scrabble of claws and a weird, hungry, hissing, screeching sound coming from in the darkness. You turn and you cannot see anything, uh, but you know that something is coming. And from the sounds of it, it's probably several somethings. And they are all definitely very hungry. And it is time for the first time to roll initiative. Uh, We're gonna do it in Pathfinder. The default initiative is gonna be perception. There are times that you may use a different skill. For example, a stealthy character trying to move while hidden might roll stealth for initiative. Um, If you feel like your character is doing something that justifies a different skill roll, you can always ask me and I'll make a determination on whether that fits the situation or not though. Uh, but, But perception is the default. So at this point, I think perception is the best bet for everybody, so let's do it. 14. Fourteen. Nope. Twenty-four. Whoops. Twenty-four. Can't can't count. <laughs> Twenty-four for Gristle. <laughs> Gristle's bad at math. All right. Uh, sorry. Was that Fee? Was that nineteen? Nineteen. Yep. All right. Ingot got a twelve. All right. And Waverly. Twenty-six. Whoa. Mm. Waverly was ready. She was ready for this. Gotta go fast. <laughs> okay, it is the top of the very first round of combat. Uh, now, at the every round on your turn, you're going to get three actions. Uh, the basic actions are striding, which moves your character up to your speed. Striking, which is you use a weapon to attack an enemy. Uh, you could also cast a spell or use a special ability. Sometimes these activities cost more than one action, and that's always noted in the description of that activity on your character sheet. Uh, There are some free actions, like talking or just dropping something that you're holding, but in general, just about everything you choose to do is going to cost one or more actions to accomplish. Uh, So you are standing there, you are sort of behind Gristle, you can hear this this hungry screeching sound of several something scrabbling in the darkness, but you also can't see down this tunnel very much. You you sort of maybe catch some movement uh, in the darkness, but you don't know what's coming. You just know that it's something, and it's probably nasty. What do you do? Oh, I think you're muted. I'm going to. Uh raise my shield all right you grab your shield you raise it up that's going to give you a plus two bonus to your armor class for the round you've got two actions left uh i would like to uh is there what's the what's the furthest i can see into the darkness like is there a rock or or anything Uh, it's it's really dark like you can basically see just beyond the entrance maybe five feet and that's it like you really can't see any further than that well, as far t- as I can see in, I'd like to cast light on something. 
Okay. Um, All right. So light, I believe, is a two action spell. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Tell us what that looks like. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, Waverly steps up next to Gristle and and hears these horrid noises coming from in front of them. Um, and so she kind of just raises her hand very cautiously. Um, and as she does, you kind of notice that from the palm of her hand, it start to glow this um, almost iridescent uh, uh, silvery gold color coming from her hand. Um, and it just sort of illuminates out um, as it kind of separates from her hand and finds uh, an object, probably just like a rock, um, yeah, it does look like uh, it has a range of touch. So some spells uh, have different ranges. This fine. one, you do have it's to touch hand. an object in order to make it glow. Dang it. It's on my hand. I'll okay, you down. could always put it on your shield, or if you're standing oh, yeah. right next to Gristle, you could always even just reach, because Gristle's probably still got her sword on her back, you could just reach out and touch the sword if you wanted to, but it's I up to you. I do want to. That's a good idea. Thank mm -hmm. you, Jim Jam. Uh, I will reach out and touch uh, Gristle's sword and illuminate okay. it. He glows with an iridescent light, thanks to your magic. Uh, it, again, it was two actions to cast that spell, and so that is uh, that. That's all three for you. Next up, Gristle. Um, it is your action. You know, again, there's something in the darkness. Uh, now your sword begins to glow, illuminating some of the area inside the tunnel. Uh, light has a 20-foot radius. Okay. Uh, so just keep in mind, if you are, if any of you are in the dark at any point, you do need to stay pretty close to Gristle in order to see what's going up. However, thanks to that light spell, you can now see a collection of four German Shepherd-sized, mangy-furred, teeth-gnashing rats teeming oh. through the tunnel. What do you do? Oh, a picture oh. of the rats. That's <laughs> very. That's a very nice touch. Very spooky. Um, <clears throat> Thank you, helper, for lighting my sword. Now I can see these vermin, because they are actually, literally, vermin, more clearly, for glory! And I want to just move my full movement up to one of them. Okay, so you stride, within with one stride, you can get to the first one, so just one action will get you right up. Uh, you're actually right in front of two rats now. Uh, they both are just like, scr almost scrabbling over one another to get to you, their teeth gnashing hungrily. What do you do? Um, I will use my second uh, action to draw my sword. And All then, right. Yeah. My third one to strike at the one in front of me. Excellent. So now all you're going to do is roll a d20 mm -hmm. and add your melee attack bonus for the great sword and see if you hit. Um, 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 so I rolled a nine and I get a plus eight. So that's okay. to 17. Right? Yeah. 17 mm -hmm. is definitely a hit. You strike down at one of these rats, easily connecting with the flesh, and now all that's left to do is roll damage. I believe for the great sword, that's 1d12, and then you add your strength bonus. Yes, that is correct. Okay, I was like, where's my d12? Uh, oh my god, I rolled a 12. Um, hey. Plus uh, hey. 3 is my strength bonus, so that is mm -hmm. a 15. 15 points of damage, so you come down and just crack this uh this rat uh right in the face as it's trying to almost it's trying to like leap up and take a bite out of you and you just meet it with the blade right as it's leaping um the force of its own forward momentum carrying it farther into your strike nearly cleaving this thing completely in two it flops to the ground and it is absolutely dead <laughs> Okay, team, I've shown you how to do it and go about eradicating these vermin, so do your part and try to help or something or just get out of my way, whatever you want to do. Uh, all right, uh, so the problem, Fee, is that while Gristle has indeed, show has indeed showed you what to do, and it is your turn, she has also placed herself in the tunnel between you and these rats, and you can still see them, uh, but you should keep in mind that there's no space to really stand next to her uh, to strike at these things. And if you used a range attack, which you are more than welcome to do, because she's in the way, they're going to get a plus one bonus to their armor class. So they're going to be just a little bit harder to hit. However, it is your, it is your turn. You got three actions. Tell me what's going on. Well, as a first level feature of the rogue, 
when I was rolling initiative, I specifically rolled my stealth because if I oh. do that mm. and I go before them, they're treated as flat footed. Okay. Oh. So then so, that's a minus two. So then they'll just have minus one, I guess, the way it bounces. That's out. right. So a flat footed, since all of the rats have not gone, they are flat footed to you, which means that they will take a minus two penalty to their armor class. Perfect. I'm going to pull out my short bow. And I'm just okay. going to lean over to Ingot. You know, that one seemed to be a lot more effective than I thought they'd be. Hmm. Uh, so I'll attack for right. 17 plus 7, so a 24. Uh, 24, especially when they're flat-footed, is... Uh, that's a hit. Now, uh, let's see. So... Uh, bu- 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 24 is actually, because they're flat-footed, that is 10 above their armor oh, class. When you get it. a success that is 10 or more above your target's armor class, it becomes a critical success, which means Ooh. you are going to roll damage twice. And your precision damage, since these are flat-footed to you, uh, you get to add your sneak attack damage, which is also rolled twice on a critical hit. Amazing. So let's see how dead this rat also is. <laughs> All right, so... Twenty-four. <laughs> 20, Twenty-four points of damage. Uh, uh, yep. Yeah, so, so Gristle steps up, cleaves one of these these things almost in two, uh, and then Thee, you just pick a, a shot and you send an arrow flying. These rats don't even seem to know that you're there, and you just skewer one right through the eye, and it just it just dies. It just flat. Go, it goes flat, and its companions are, are still scrabbling. They don't even seem to notice that they're losing the fight. These are very unintelligent uh, creatures driven only by their hungry instincts. So they don't seem to notice that the battle is turning against them. That was your second action. You do have one more action. Now, keep in mind, you could use that third action to attack, but if you do, it'll be at a minus five penalty. Uh, because every every attack that you take beyond the first takes a minus five penalty from the previous one. Let's do it just because they're still flat-footed at this point, so I'm going to... Sure. Will I have it? All right. Uh, so that is a 13 plus 7, which would be 20, minus 5 would be 15. 15. Um... Because they are flat-footed to you, that is going to be a success. So that yes. is just going to be regular damage. Uh, but again, they're flat-footed, so you do get to add your sneak attack damage. Awesome. So that is a 5 and a 4. 5, 4, so 9 plus 4 from my bonus is 13. 13. Uh, just out of curiosity, you said your bonus. What is what is the bonus? Uh, dexterity. Okay. Right, right, right. Because I believe you have a feature that allows you to add your dex damage yep. to uh, two strikes. So I don't know that you get to add that with the short bow because oh, the short I mean, bow if... doesn't typically add doesn't typically add strength damage to it. So I think when you're using a melee weapon, you'll be able to add that bonus damage, but that not when you're using your totally short bow. Fine. That's totally fine. So then that would just be nine. Nine points of damage. Still, these are but mere rats, and that is enough to take another rat out of the fight as you just skewer it right through the side, puncturing along. Uh, its squealing becomes this gargled death cry, and it dies. Yeah. Is that what you were there hoping for there, Gristle? That was very admirable. Perhaps you are not just some unemployed weird person. <laughs> oh, I am. I am. I am. Believe that. <laughs> don't, don't change your opinion. But strong, and I appreciate it. <laughs> Uh, that was your third action, which takes us to my turn. Um, sadly, oh. I, ha- I have but one rat left. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> one measly little rat. Uh, but what I do have is a gristle right in my path. So this rat is just going to scramble over the corpses of its friends. It's going to have to take a step to get to you. A step is just when you move only five feet, um, but you don't trigger reactions when you move a step. Mm. So this is going to, it is going to step right up to you, Gristle, with its first action. With its second action, it is going to try to gnash at you with its needly little teeth. It Mm. leaps up and hits an armor class of 12. Oh, mine is 18. 
18. So, uh, because I, I I rolled under your armor class, that is a miss. Uh, because why not? I am going to go ahead and take a second attack against you. I got one more action left. Now, teeth and natural weapons are agile. The agile trait means that on a second attack, instead of taking a minus five penalty, I only take a minus four penalty on this one. So it's not quite as hard to attack multiple times if you have an agile weapon in your hands. Uh, the second one is only going to hit an armor class of 15, which I know is a miss against you. So it tries to hit you twice, but it can't. Its teeth just aren't strong enough to get through that shiny, shiny armor that you're wearing. And it is just gnawing ineffectively at the metal. That takes us to Ingot. Yeah. Ingot has watched all of this happening and is uh, quietly just flipping through his spell book. Uh, he's... Ingot has prepared for this moment. Ingot will be brave and closes it with a determined look on his face. And he's going to take his first action to move forward uh, to get closer okay. to this last rat. Mm -hmm. uh, as he does, you can see that he pulls a couple of stones from his pocket and in one hand starts uh, moving them around like the like meditation crystals. And mm -hmm. as they start to move around, you can see it goes faster and faster. They start sparking with electricity. Uh, he throws down the uh the two stones and his hand covered in electricity comes forward and shocking grasps the rat nice all right so that is going to be a spell attack yeah with shocking grasp that's a nasty one <laughs> it's high math 18 plus my spell plus seven so 26 uh 26 would be a critical success. Zap. So you will be rolling damage twice because yes. on a spell attack, you can definitely crit. <laughs> it is 2d12. So that is six plus seven. That's 13. Uh, not made of metal or holding metal, but critical hit double the initial damage. Got it. So 12, that would be 13 times 226 damage. Mm-hmm. Well, even if it had not been a critical hit, you would have completely fried this rat. But as it is, like, there's just this extended jolt of electricity that gushes forth from your hand into the rat. And it, like, it catches on fire. Oh. Uh, and you guys can, like, smell this burning rat uh, as the fat inside of it, like, starts to pop. And parts of it start to explode from oh, the force gosh. of electricity uh, as you completely devastate the last rat uh it is very very dead <laughs> ingot looks down at his hand in horror and it's just ingot is too powerful <laughs> being strong that... is good so congratulations uh you both have now made it into my good graces you're welcome you were all incredible is anyone injured ingot has sustained no injuries only to the psyche. No, I'm oh. fine. Um, I mean, I'm totally cool. They did touch my armor a little bit, and that's gross, and I don't like that, so I'll be working on cleaning <laughs> that off tonight. We're all very brave. So I feel like we accomplished the mission. That was all that there was. Uh, we well, killed the vermin. We must, we must find the fish. Oh, right. The not pet fish. The Yes. Ingot suggests we follow our noses. And he starts sniffing around to see where the smell comes from. Sure. Uh, so kind of short, also, though. <laughs> uh, Ingot, I believe you are also a rock dwarf, correct? Yes, Ingot is so, a rock dwarf. So I'm going to go ahead and roll a secret perception check for you. Some rolls in Pathfinder are now secret, where I'm actually going to roll. You're just going to tell me what your bonus is. And you do get to add your, your bonus for being a rock dwarf to this one. Great, and this is the, you want my perception bonus plus? Yes. Okay, so the total is plus six. Okay, uh, so you are looking around and you can see that um, some of the rubble and the way that the breach in the basement was made, you can tell that these rats did not breach through the wall. There's no way. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, it does look like the stone was worked with tools and it is very likely that it was, was an intentionally created, like this was like somebody broke into here on purpose um, and they were using tools and it wasn't these rats. There's no way. We have spoken of monsters and Ingot would be impressed if a rat was able to hold tools and carve the rock with such precision. The rats did not create this breach, Ingot thinks. 
Perhaps it was something else. Like a uh, bigger rat. Perhaps. I don't think it was going to be bigger rats, because if it was rats, they would have just eaten the fish instead of taking it. Trinket True. thinks this might have been a planned attack. Oh, God. Very wise. I guess it is handy having <clears throat> some uh, book folk on my side. Uh, excellent. Oh, well, I know this because I steal things, not because of books. Oh, I see. Yes. A person of experience, not of, of letters, just like me. <laughs> excellent. <laughs> uh, it's always uh, free to steal knowledge. <laughs> That's an that's an incredible <laughs> laugh, by the way. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, Beverly. <clears throat> it's well, wavily. Yes, that's what I said. Oh. Now, uh, let us, uh, I guess, continue and look for these missing fish that were taken by a thing that is bigger than a dog-sized rat. Definitely. Yes. Um. Can I make a, another perception check, or would Ingot's perception have? Uh, is there anything us... specifically that you are going to be looking for? Yeah, uh, perhaps um, a trail, a, a track. <laughs> oh, sure. If oh. you want to do any kind of tracking, we're actually going to be using the survival skill. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, so was... if anybody has that, uh, I can I, I can roll you a, a secret survival check. Oh, okay. I was going to say, does she get any pluses because my is my sword still lit? Up from yes, her so spell? she can see. Yeah, your, your light is going to last, I believe, for the entire day. It's going to last until yes. the next morning. So you won't have to worry about light as long as you're holding that sword and you are near Gristle. Or you are, you are Gristle, but other people. I am always near my sword and I am Gristle. Those two things are true. <laughs> so are we all rolling or just uh, uh Waverly? Currently, I know that Waverly is, is looking. All of you, start, like, as she starts to poke around on the ground, she's looking about, uh, sort of, uh, you, you can tell she's looking for something. You can uh, also join in that if you would like. Sure. Okay. So I'll go ahead and have everybody who is going to be doing that make a survival check. So it's not a secret one. It's a. No, we're not going to do a secret one okay. for that. Well, I got a six, so doing cool. <laughs> You're just admiring your glowing sword, <laughs> probably worrying over the, maybe, is that a scratch in your armor where the rat tried to bite <gasps> you? You can't really tell. It's, uh, it's really distracting. 22. 22. Uh, Waverly, you are noticing quite a few things. One, uh, you can see some drag marks in the basement that indicates that some of the missing boxes may have been taken away from here. You don't really find like footprints per se, it's a stone floor, uh, but you do note that there's like some drag marks. Um, it looks like uh, there are a few um, like fallen uh, bits of fish maybe that, that had that fallen out of some of the barrels or something as they were taken away. Like, like somebody like took these things away down into the tunnel. Um, it looks like whoever broke in intended specifically to steal a whole bunch of these fish all right so waverly's gonna go over to that area and kind of kneel down and she'll grab like some of the the dirt and rubble that's there and kind of examine it for a moment and kind of like follow this this drag mark oh gristle perhaps you should come here um it seems that someone something has drug these crates through here um I do have to agree with Ingot that perhaps this was a planned attack um, to steal the fish. Ah, well, the thing is that there's a lot of fish everywhere in this town. This is a fish port town. You can literally just walk down the port and see every boat full of fish. So why would somebody want just a couple of barrels of fish? Strange thing to take. I'm not sure if I, I think, I'm not sure if I agree with your assessment of the situation, but... It's a good try. Jim, do the boxes have any specific logo or markings on them? It looks like um, Tamily is sort of in charge of a great number of catches from a whole host of private fish uh, fishers. Uh, it looks like you, you see you see some uh, make a society check actually. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, that's funny. Yay. Hey, very nice. Me too. 
Oops. 22. So yeah, I mean, you you actually recognize a, a number of the logos, uh, but it looks like basically uh, the fishing boats go out in the morning. Uh, there are a vast number of independent like people who just have their own boats and they go out and they, they haul catches in every morning. Uh, and then there are also some bigger companies that do a lot of fishing off the coast. Uh, you can see a pretty vast array of markings and logos on the various barrels and boxes. Um, from what you can see, there does not appear to necessarily be a specific pattern to what has been left behind and what has been taken. Like you don't notice like, oh, it looks like there's only there's only one company's fish that are missing or anything like that. Like there isn't anything you can glean in that way. Um, but it does look like, I mean, like the entire, uh, everybody who, who brings in a haul brings it here for Tamily to process you you can find you you see that there are a whole bunch of tables uh and, and places for uh where she probably guts and scales the catches and uh, prepares them to actually sell on the market can i take a look at the rats themselves and try to determine like if it looks like they're well fed or not sure uh for this one i would allow a nature check or a medicine check uh let's go medicine that's a 16 plus three for a 19. Okay. Uh, you can tell that these are probably uh, relatively malnourished, probably because they require so much food due to their size. Uh, they probably lived down in the tunnels. Uh, they were all adults. Um, so they're, you know, older they probably been living down uh beneath the city for however long they don't appear to be like cared well cared for or pets or anything like that like mm -hmm. if somebody like if somebody sort of quote unquote owned the rats they didn't do a very good job taking care of them because they're mangy and yeah. uh they're they, their fur is all patchy and they're not very particularly well fed they don't also show any signs of abuse though specifically that you might notice from somebody who was neglecting them or mistreating them so they're probably just natural feral okay. rats that were so down is, here it, i can i can reasonably assume someone wasn't stealing the food to feed these rats because they don't look like they've been fed no they were probably uh they probably are opportunistic feeders here cool. they saw the breach they smelled the food they came to see what was up cool i'll, I'll pass that along okay mm -hmm. Uh, as we're examining, Ingot is going to uh, grab one of the crystals around his neck, and it's on a longer chain, and it is a, kind of transparent. He holds mm -hmm. it up to look through it, and he's casting Detect Magic. Uh, okay. So it's actually a pulse that goes out 30 feet. Um, he's going to look specifically also at the shaping of the stone, but also where the fish are cleaned and where the, the crates were dragged. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you reach out your, your sort of sixth sense, see if you can uh, detect the subtle emanations of magical auras, and you detect none. Mm. There is a little flutter from what you know to be the light spell on Gristle's sword, but you sort of tune that out, mm. and there's nothing else in the area. I will keep that to myself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ooh, you all are taking a really long time to... Uh, stare at rocks and such. Uh, I'm going to scout ahead a little. If you want to follow me, that'd be great. If not, you can... You're adults, so you can walk. It's fine. Uh, I want to <laughs> go... I just want to <laughs> continue down the tunnel and uh, to... Just, just, I'm just moving on. I'm moving on. Okay. They come with me or not. Waverly like is on the ground with the dirt in her hand, and she stands up quickly, noticing Gristle's leaving, and and just runs to try to catch up. <laughs> uh, Thea and Ingot, are you also going to follow behind? I'm going to. I'm going to run to the steps. Uh, and yell up, it might be a little bit longer than we thought, but please don't let anyone else down here. Thank you, I appreciate it. Just so she knows that, like, we're disappearing. <laughs> okay. Uh, sure, uh, a moment later, like, she opens up the door, and she's like, oh, oh, yeah, um, are, is, everybody's okay, right? Like, everything's fine? We're just, we're just, we're just delving, we're just following the path that might take us to your fish. Oh, that, that, that's, that's really great. That's really great. Thank you. She closes the door. You hear the click of the lock. Well, she doesn't think we just die down here. She when locks we come back up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So as you move forward, um, we're going to go into what's called exploration mode because you know it's probably a relatively dangerous area. So mm -hmm. it would be good to potentially be on your guard. Uh, as you move forward, there are actually a number of things that you can be doing that might help yourself or your companions explore the area. 
There, uh, each of these is called an exploration activity, and it usually involves a skill check based on what you're attempting to do, but some don't. You can be searching continuously as you move. This means that I'll make a secret perception check, uh, and if you come across anything out of the ordinary that you notice, you would notice it, like a secret door or a, a trap or a, you know whatever it is that might that might catch your attention. You could constantly maintain a spell such as detect magic. If that way, if you come across a magical aura, you'll automatically notice it as you're passing by. Uh, if you want to be the sneaky sort, you can avoid notice. Uh, basically means that if you get into a, an encounter of any kind, you'll be hidden and you'll be using stealth as your initiative role. You can be defending, which basically means you're moving forward slowly and you've already got your shield raised. This means that if anything attacks you on that first round of combat, you've already got your shield at the ready. You don't have to spend an action raising it. Uh, scouting is a great idea. Uh, if anybody is scouting, that means that as you're moving ahead and behind the party, you're keeping an eye out for danger. And this actually gives everybody in the party a plus one bonus to initiative if you mm -hmm. actually do come across an encounter. Um, it is important to note that you can only engage in one exploration activity at a time. Uh, you can switch to a new one, but that means that you're no longer doing the old one. And it also slows movement down. So if you are ever in a situation where you have to move hastily, it's probably not necessarily your best choice because you're moving sort of at half your exploration speed. However, in these particular tunnels, you would probably find it to your advantage to be ready for surprises and and choosing one of these activities. So if you would like to, just declare that, let me know how you're moving forward and I will keep that in mind. I would like uh, to Gristle, be- I know. Oh, Go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. I'd like to be defending shield up. All right, so you're moving forward shield at the ready. Uh, Gristle, anything from you? Um, I think I'd like to keep doing this, do, this, do the scout action. Okay, Looking so you're head on a swivel. Uh, if anybody, if you're gonna roll initiative for any reason, because Gristle is scouting, you're all gonna get an additional plus one bonus to initiative, no matter what skill you're rolling for. Uh, Ingot, anything from you? Yeah, Ingot's gonna keep up his detect magic uh, and keep okay. looking through his crystal to see if anything pops up. It's what he's interested Constantly in. Constantly pinging, got mm -hmm. it. Uh, and then of course, Fee, what do I got um, from you? I'm actually going to put the short bow away, hold my dagger, and then I'm going to avoid notice while we're traveling. Okay, so as you're moving, you're going to be sticking to the shadows, keeping it quiet. Uh, you'll actually, I'll, I'll roll a secret stealth check for you that I keep in mind. So can you tell me what your stealth bonus is? Yes, I can. It is a six. Six, okay. So I've got your stealth total. Awesome. Um, so if you will come across anything, uh, I'll roll against that stealth total, and if I fail on a perception check against you, then you'll start combat hidden. You can also roll stealth as your initiative bonus, so you'll be able to get awesome. that neat little bonus that you get for doing that. Cool. Okay, you begin moving forward. It's a little slow, because again, you guys are, are head on a swivel, eye out for danger, um, uh, focusing on your various exploration mode tasks. Uh, and the first thing that you come to as you make your way deeper under Otari is um, there is a sharp drop off, maybe 30, 40 feet in, you come to an area where there's basically just like this 10 foot drop. You can, by the light of your sword, of your glowing sword, you can see the bottom. Um, but it doesn't look like you'll be able to get down without climbing. You could jump, but it would probably, it's probably, it's like right at the edge of, of a little too high, unless you're feeling really brave. Uh, it would probably hurt to just go <laughs> leaping down there. Uh, you could try to climb it uh, with an athletics check uh, if you would like. Okay, team, we've encountered a physical obstacle here. It looks like there's a cliff. Um, Hey, uh, you, um, in, in, in Ingrid, that's what your name was. Um, you can Ingrid? do magic. Uh, can you make us fly or anything cool like that over this little chasm here? I, Ingrid could do something like that. Uh, let's see. Mm. For up to one minute, target reaches ground during time. I just want to make sure I can one creature. So 
Ingot has the ability to protect one person in this fashion, but Ingot does not have the magical ability for everyone. Okay, cool. So I'm hearing that your magic is useless for a party of more than just yourself. <laughs> Ingot has another idea, the magic of rope. And he pulls out a rope. That's not magic, that's a rope. I don't understand what you're saying. We could use a rope. Got it, yes, use those words, thank you. Mm. I, I, I would assume with all of your athleticism um, and, and battles and adventures and fights um, that you'd be quite good at climbing and, and perhaps could easily use this rope to climb down? Yes, of course. I am the best climber in Otari and everyone knows that. Yeah. Uh, I was just hoping that maybe... I, I kind of I'm going to be real. I'm worried about the three of you falling down this cliff and dying really quickly because I, can any of you climb a rope? Have you ever seen a rope before? Oh, yes. I'm quite proficient at climbing. Never in my life. Ingrid brought the rope. <laughs> okay, we've got three rope climbing researchers uh, or whatever. So let's go down this cliff and back up this cliff then, I suppose, to continue on for glory and to finish this mission and get ten gold. <clears throat> okay. I will say I've never actually climbed a rope before, but I have read a lot about it. Uh, um, that's fine. Just um, watch what I'm doing and do the same things, but like more carefully. <laughs> yes, of course. Okay, please don't fall down this cliff. I feel partially responsible for you, and I think your uh, teacher or principal or whatever it's called will be mad at me if I killed you on our first mission. <clears throat> oh, yes. <laughs> that would be quite troublesome. How would yeah. I ever finish my thesis? <gasps> what is your the Hey, what is your thesis about again? Oh, um... Well, I... I am... <clears throat> Currently, I'm still deciding. Please don't tell anyone. Um, I just, I thought that perhaps if I took a work study, um, I'd be able to decide through adventure what truly spoke to me, and I could write my thesis on that. So currently, um, I, I am currently starting my thesis about um, following an, an epic and heroic adventurer, um, and and the tales of an adventuring party. I think that is a very, I'm starting to understand that a thesis is sort of like a story and not a table like I assumed earlier. So oh, I think that's yes. very good to write a book about me. <laughs> Everyone's gonna love it, so keep doing that thing. Oh, yes, <clears throat> so far it seems to be the right direction, but you know, I would like to further examine the- No, no, the first idea was good. Uh, just adventures, me leading this party, th that one is very good. Don't uh, stray too far from the mark there, bud. Okay. But, if, it, hmm. but if, it's, if, it's, if it's a story about you and stories are for nerds, doesn't that mean you're making nerds? No, no, nerds are the ones who read the stories. Yes. Heroes are the ones who make the stories. <laughs> but then the only people who will be your fans are nerds. I can't really hear you. I'm so tall. I can't. You're just so I'm far tall. below me. Your voice is <laughs> drifting into the wind. Let us go down this stupid hill and back up the hill then. <clears throat> Do I roll <laughs> athletics? Yes. Uh, <laughs> the only question that I have at this point um, is, are you guys going to try to anchor the rope somewhere, or are you just going to hold it for her? Oh. Yes. Uh, Ingot is going <laughs> to use Ingot's skills as a rock dwarf to try to find a sturdy... Uh, sort of hold for this rope to tie sure. it around. Sure, yeah, you, you find a, a jutting stone that you can easily tie the rope around and there the, the drop off is not so deep that, that you don't have, you have plenty of slack left over. So you tie it up real nice, uh, Gristle sets yourself, you, know, you got the rope in hand, you set yourself against the edge and now it's time for the old athletics check to climb down. Okay, I get a plus six, which is pretty cool. Um, All right. That is a uh, 13 plus six is uh, 19. 19 is a success. So on a success, you move about halfway down the cliff uh, and you're you're about halfway to the ground and you need to make one more check. Oh, okay. How long is this cliff? How many feet is this cliff? Uh, oh, it's a six are slow, that's all. That's a 16? 16, all right. Uh, so it's not quite as graceful as, as your first attempt, but I mean, without any trouble, really, you get down to the bottom and you are safely at the bottom. You're looking up at about, you know, you can see your friends above you. Uh, 
you're still all within the radius of her light, so no worries there. Who's next? I would go next. Okay. I would like to position myself so that if someone falls, I can try to catch them. Mm. Okay. So you basically just basically right where you are, as long as she doesn't, you know, try something <laughs> crazy, she would fall on you with that theoretically. Jam Jam. Yeah. Here's here's where we're gonna get to our first um how many loopholes can Katie find tonight moment. <laughs> oh good. I'm yeah, glad they're in the beginner thing, box right? we're in loophole uh, territory. Right. <laughs> so I know we must use our athletics to climb, but mm -hmm. is there a way I can use acrobatics to climb instead? Absolutely. Uh, you could use acrobatics if you wanted to leap down uh, on a success. You could basically treat the fall as a little bit shorter. It would probably still hurt, but not quite as much if you succeeded. Uh, but in terms of actually climbing, it's more about your raw strength. And so we're going to go ahead and stick with athletics on that one. Even if I wanted to leap? <laughs> if you want to leap, I mean, you can. I, I can't looks stop ready. you from doing that. But you said I would hurt myself, perhaps. It's like unless you unless you got like a critical success, you would probably still take just a little bit of damage. Okay. <laughs> well, I can't decide which would be worse. <laughs> I think it's so <laughs> funny to see this book nerd jump off a cliff. Yeah, it's gonna solidify if your Gristle's intern or not. This right, it's true. So I I kind of told Gristle I could climb, and I realized that I have yeah. a zero in athletics. <laughs> yeah, I, so I thought none of you nerds could climb, and you were like, we're all fine. We'll <laughs> see. <laughs> okay, so can I hold on to the rope but jump? <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't know that there's really many loopholes for you to go through on this one. I okay. think. I think I'm if you want to jump, jump, you're taking that I'm risk. Jump. Yes. Yes. I feel like the uh, risk is. Wait, so what? you guys watch as as Waverly is like, yeah, I can climb, and then she just does a run at the cliff and looks like she's gonna throw herself off of it. Um, <laughs> she's like, oh, I read. Shocking display of sudden bravery or some we'll see how skillful it is you can now roll an acrobatics check as you go sailing over the cliff's edge uh gristle yeah you're standing there with your arms outstretched and she like leaps over you and starts going <laughs> and you're like oh okay i'm so scared okay here gonna, we go i'm gonna look at Inkit. should i have told her okay. that i have a climbing kit <laughs> Uh, that's going to be a 16. 16. Uh, well, the thing is, no matter how it shakes out, you're going to hit the bottom. Yeah, That's sure. definite. Uh, you go sailing over Gristle's head, uh, and you start to descend. And you try to get your feet under you, and you try to brace yourself to absorb the shock of most of the landing. Now, typically, when you fall, you take uh, damage equal to half the amount, the distance that you fell. So in this case, it would be five. However, you did succeed on your acrobatics checks. So you absorb some of that shock, and you land, and it's just jarring, uh, but you only take two points of damage. Oh, perfect. Uh, but you are safely now at the bottom. Uh, you, you're, you're prone at first, so you have to like pick yourself up and dust yourself off. But you have you have succeeded in getting down. So, that so, happened yeah. definitely. So, so, so we really will stand up, and she absolutely probably sprained her ankle. You know, one of those like mm. sprains you get, and then you kind of like walk it off. So she's gonna try to just kind of walk it off without letting Gristle see her limp <laughs> for a couple steps. <laughs> that was very hero heroic, uh, young helper. Uh, but uh, you didn't cl climb like I told you to climb on the. Yes, no? well, I did tell you I was proficient at climbing. Though I had never done it before, I did read a lot about it. But then I decided to think back into other adventures I've read about, and it seems that I had just as likely of a chance to fall climbing as I did jumping. So I chose to jump. Okay, uh, you know, we should t sit down and talk about um, overthinking situations at some point, but now's not really a great time. I'm just glad you're safe and that your teacher is not going to yell at me la later. You're maybe. not the first person to tell me to stop overthinking something, so perhaps I should take that into consideration. If I say it, it must be true. Okay, are you the rest of you two people who can apparently climb super well going to come down here or not? Inga grabs the rope and looks over down towards Waverly and just calls out, Waverly needs new climbing books. 
and then starts to descend. <laughs> okay. Uh, make me that athletics check and see how far we get. Hmm. Okay. Well, it's a seven. Seven. <laughs> uh, well, a seven is not a critical failure. Okay. So you grab the rope uh, mm -hmm. and you start trying to position yourself to go down uh, and you almost lose your grip. Uh, some of the rocks sort of skitter underneath your feet and you hold on tight and you pull yourself up and you basically just make no progress, but you uh -oh. don't fall. And uh, I will again, like. try again. Okay, make another athletics check for me. <laughs> it's a three. <gasps> a three. This time it was a critical failure. And yeah. again, the good thing is you get to the bottom. That sure. happens definitely. As you set yourself to climb down once again, uh, this time a bigger chunk of stone that you must have knocked loose on your first failure uh, falls right out from under your feet. And you sort of forget yourself for a moment and let go of the rope and just drop. You drop down all 10 feet, crashing into the ground below. Do I not uh, care? Now, no. Gristle was ready well, also, to try to catch you. Something so, else happens. <laughs> oh, tell me about it. As Ingot's falling down, he's going straight towards Gristle, uh, and you can see that these stones are falling around him. He grabs one out of the midair and throws it down right at Gristle. Gristle, you can feel this sort of like puff of air pop up uh, right from the area around you, and this puff comes up and slowly catches Ingot and catches his descent as he gently fall floats down in Featherfall as a reaction. Very impressive. Oh. Very impressive. Wow. Did have a nerd spell. Just for Ingot. Oh, well, I, I mean, almost I almost imagine it like like the whole falling was a bit that yeah. Ingot did because he knew he could just catch himself. Sure, we'll <laughs> was go like with a... that one. <laughs> it was, yeah, right? I'm starting to suspect that you all are trying really hard to impress me right now, and it's kind of working. So good job, everybody. <laughs> Fee, you're the last one on top of this cliff. Everybody else has gotten to the bottom, uh, some more gracefully than others. What do you do? No, I'm starting to think this might have been a mistake. <laughs> and I'm gonna like reach into the satchel on my back and pull out a climbing kit. Hey. <laughs> I'm gonna climbing kit my way <laughs> down. All right. So you begin, yeah, you have some tools, especially uh, some, some gripping gloves. Uh, you attach like some like spikes hammer. to your, yeah. yeah. You get it all going and then you start climbing down uh, and I'll still need an athletics check from you, but I believe you get a bonus for using that kit. Yes. Damn. I like to imagine that there's a cool montage of like up close you putting on the gloves and the, <laughs> the boots. <laughs> Suiting up montage. Yeah. That's a 16. 16. Uh, that is a success. So you make your way halfway down the cliff. With a with a regular success, you get halfway down the cliff. You'll just need one more good check to get to the bottom safely. Ha. 19. 19. Even better. Uh, you find some easier handholds. You drive the spikes in deep. You get down to the bottom. You are now all safely at the bottom of this little cliff. Um, good job, everybody. You need to it. celebrate the small victories. Please uh, don't I celebrate the small victories. It's great. <laughs> it was. That was a. I did not expect the variety of ways that we went down to the bottom of this cliff. Uh, but that's the beauty of Pathfinder. <laughs> there is a tunnel that continues away uh, from here, deeper beneath Otari. So what do you guys do? Just so that it's said, Ingot is going to leave the rope tied so that we have a way to get back up. <laughs> you have a way to get right back up. Exactly. Okay. I'll take this rope from us, Jim Jim. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what kind of... Your uh, evil was built into your username, so I'm just taking precautions. <laughs> I have been known to take a rope or two away from people. No, uh, we'll see. This is the beginner box after all. Sure, sure. Safe. <laughs> well, uh, that was kind of weird, but you all made it and I'm actually a little proud of you. Uh, I mean, Thee, you could have told us you had a climbing kit at the beginning, but... Um... Nobody asked me! You jumped off the cliff, you ran over, and you started climbing down. Communi t t communication! To be okay. fair, Thee did tell Ingot. <laughs> oh, okay, well then, see, now we're hiding, we're keeping secrets. This is not a good team dynamic we have going on here. But I didn't mm -hmm. think you'd want to know, it's nerd stuff. Oh my god. Okay, all right. Just because I call one thing another thing, you don't just not tell us you have equipment that can help us get past an obstacle that all of us need to do. But I learned how to do it from my book. <sighs> okay, I, you know what? I'm not going to lie. I'm not a seasoned leader. This is sort of a 
we're all learning team building at the same time. And <laughs> I don't think even one of us helps one another getting down that cliff. So next time, let's try to do a little more. I mean, she jumps. The, the <laughs> points away from the kick. It looked pretty cool, though. I mean, come on. Thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, let's go down the tunnel and not get killed. <laughs> Deeper beneath Otari. Okay. Uh, are you all going to just carry over the same exploration activities as before? Yes. 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 All righty. So moving cautiously, you begin your way. Uh, it does look like you are actually descending deeper underground. Uh, there are actually some, they're natural, they're not like carved steps, but there is almost like a little stone staircase that leads you deeper and deeper into the tunnels. Um, you are moving along. Uh, Gristle, I, I take it you would be in the lead there uh, or is somebody else, I, I think is somebody else doing that? Scouting the lead. Okay. <laughs> <Gabe>. Sure. So <laughs> first in line. Um, and you're, you know, you got your sword up and at the ready because it is, in fact, your light source. And you know, like at night when you're traveling along and you feel, you can't see it, but you feel the strand of spider web like right against your face Ooh. as you walk into it. There's that feeling and it's just that, that awful, nasty stickiness and you're trying to wipe it away from your face. Um, but you don't see anything. <laughs> you move a little deeper and you now are starting to notice that a lot of the surrounding rock and stone is, is sort of covered in webbing. Um, and soon you come to a spot where there is this wider chamber that is almost filled with old webbing. Just uh, as you're noticing how much of this web hangs all about you, you see a flurry of movement in the darkness as eight massive legs unfurl from a bristly hairied body and a massive Ooh. spider launches itself towards you. And at this point, we're gonna need to take a couple of minutes. We're gonna take a little break. We're gonna come back and resolve this after, after a word from our sponsors, because it's time. I need to go get some more water. Spiders. We're going to be back in just a few minutes, everybody. Don't forget to, to stick around for more Troubles in Otari. We'll be back in just a few minutes. On a real night of gaming, you bounce from a core rulebook to the advanced player's guide, and of course your character sheet. But what if? We created a single book specifically tailored for your character class with a massive character sheet to record every detail of your hero. And then took all the official Pathfinder rules, spells, feats, and skills that you need for your class and your class only, and combined that with an expansive journal to capture your story. Character sheet, rulebook, journal. All in one. The complete character chronicle is live on Kickstarter now. Up your game with a Pathfinder character folio from Ultra Pro. Each character folio features a full art cover, 12 single pocket pages for character sheets and maps with dry erase capability. Also, internal front and back pockets for excess notes. Find character folios at your local game store or shop.ultrapro.com.
become inspired by Sirenscape Online Player's massive sound library and weave your tabletop legends by building custom sound sets that bring your immersive world to life. Simply download the app to access the entire Sirenscape archive anytime you need epic sounds. The online player works perfectly alongside any virtual tabletop to bring your players together no matter where they are in the world. Broadcast your custom sound sets in real time with flawless audio quality to give them a game they'll never forget. Get the Sirenscape online player today at sirenscape.com. Inappropriate sound is inappropriate. Don't let the action suffer from a lack of atmosphere. Let Sirenscape set the tone and bring your game to life. See? That's better. Journey to Sirenscape.com to download the app and make it the year of atmosphere at your table. And be sure to watch Dragons and Things every Friday at 6 p.m. Pacific on Twitch. Everybody. Welcome back to Troubles in Atari, our Pathfinder Beginner Box Adventure. We are running through, in fact, the Pathfinder Beginner Box Adventure, Menace Under Otari. And we are having a great time doing it. It is super fun. We're learning about Pathfinder. We're showing off the box, which I do want to remind all of you, if you want to have as much fun as we're having, you can go and get the beginner box now. You can get it right now on paizo.com. Uh, it is perfect for if you want to, if you're experienced and want to introduce some new friends to Pathfinder, it is an excellent entry point to the game. And even if you have no idea what RPGs are, like this beginner box takes you through the whole process. It shows you how to run a game uh, or play the game with somebody else is running. It's it's absolutely a fantastic resource. I highly recommend it. I'm having a great time. I think everybody else is having a great time. So get the box, get the beginner box. It's super good. <laughs> 
Uh, let's bring everybody back so we can dive in because we had left off at a very exciting moment where I was about to uh, uh, liquefy the insides of Gristle and <coughs> extract them via, via uh, horrible I'm wearing spider armor, deck. So <laughs> that That's is how right. Works, right? Uh, <laughs> Where we left off was you guys are exploring some tunnels beneath Otari, looking for a whole bunch of missing fish and just finding out who broke into the basement of the fishery. What is going on in these tunnels uh, when you stumbled across a massive spider web inhabited by a massive spider that is ready for a new lunch? Let's roll initiative right off the bat. Uh, this is going to be perception for everybody except for... Thee, who was avoiding notice, and we'll get to roll stealth. Uh, but I was scouting, so does it count still that everyone gets plus one? Uh, okay. Everybody is still getting that plus one bonus. Okay. Do not forget it. Yay. Oh, what if I roll a natural one? What happens? <laughs> terribly <laughs> happens, except you'll probably go last. Oh, okay. I, <laughs> I don't know what the rule so that's one. Your pass. armor falls off, and that's it. Oh! <laughs> you are oh. dead when you roll Dinner. one on initiative. <laughs> Peter, don't tell them that stuff. We'll do sorry, it. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> How dare you? I'm your brain, Jim Jam. Uh, uh, what was that? 16. 16 for Waverly. And 18 for Ingot. 18 for Ingot. Great. <laughs> what was that, Fee? Uh, well, I rolled a 25, but that also means I go, I'm probably going first, which is going to be... I'm going to do something stupid. Uh oh. <laughs> I see you've been following my example. Uh... <laughs> All right. And then, uh, sorry, Gri uh, Gristle, what was your total? Seven. Just out of curiosity? Seven. Seven. With all that oneness happening, so. Well, you know, you didn't, ex you had the spider web on your face and you, you spent all this time trying to clear it off. Uh, and, and then the spider comes out of nowhere, catches you completely by surprise. You, you didn't know what to expect. Uh, Thee, you are a little quicker on the draw. You are going first. Um, what do you do? I think I'm feeling overconfident uh, <laughs> and I kind of want to put Gristle in their place. So I'm going to run up and try to stab this spider. Okay, so you rush up to the front of the group uh, with your first action. And mm -hmm. as you step, uh, start stepping into this wider chamber and you can see the spider up ahead, uh, you're noticing that it's very difficult to move through. There's so much webbing, it crisscrosses everywhere. It actually is a lot tougher than it looks and it's holding you up a little bit. Uh, this Basically this entire chamber is gonna be difficult terrain, which means that for every essentially five feet of movement, it costs mm -hmm. you 10 feet of movement to get through. So you're actually effectively moving at half speed. Okay. Uh, so you still have two actions left. You can continue moving forward, but you know it's gonna be a little bit more of a struggle. Uh, so what do you, you know want to do? I'd, I'd say let's keep moving forward. I feel like okay. with the way he's running, it's almost, it's like when you start running into water and like you're still caught <laughs> moving forward, but it's slower. So it's, he's going to commit right. to it. All right. So uh, because of the distance between you and this spider and the fact that you're moving more slowly at the end of your movement, you get right up next to the spider, but it's taken you all three of your actions. And now the spider gets to go. Oh no. And the spider does you you were moving pretty stealthily up to this point the spider does not seem to have any trouble sensing exactly where you are dang it and as the webs are sort of like like vibrating around you you realize like you you think back to like the wait this is how spiders hunt and you've literally walked into the spider's web and it just starts trying to bite you see venom fit dripped fangs are like coming right down at your shoulder as I make my first attack for the round. Uh, that is going to hit armor class 20. Yep, that hits. All right, so the, the fangs sink deep into your flesh. <gasps> you are feeling so confident rushing ahead. But now maybe you're rethinking that. You do take seven points of piercing damage. But the real threat is that I'm going to need you to make a fortitude save. Oh, no. All right, let's do it. That is a six. A six is a failure. Oh no! Uh, so you uh, like the fa like instead of just re like it bites you and it just stays there for a moment, 
And finally, after a few seconds, it starts to pull away. And at first, it just kind of felt like a little odd. Um, but then you start to feel this burning, like blossom in your shoulder and spread through your chest. And you know that it was just pumping venom into your veins. You're going to take an additional two points of poison damage. And you are flat footed. Oh, no. Uh, as your reactions start to slow, your senses dull just a little bit. Uh, you realize that you are in perhaps quite a bit of trouble as it rears back and just tries to bite you again <gasps> with its second action. Those uh, that is going to armor class 16. Now, when you're flat-footed, you're at a minus two to your normal armor class. But I can use nimble dodge as a reaction to gain plus two to my armor class. Ooh, that's true. If you've got the reaction nimble dodge, you oh. can try to dip, dip, dodge, and duck your way out of this one. Uh, I'm, I'm so going to basically do that. negate the flat-footed condition. Oh. All right. Uh, so I take it that brings us to a miss on that second attack. Yep, because it uh, it'll I need, I have a 17 armor class, so it's, All right. it's probably even as the poison's in my veins, it's like. I feel myself swaying right, so I lean into it to get out of the way. Mm -hmm. uh, sort of instincts take over. You dodge that second bite. Uh, the spider doesn't seem to be really f like it, it almost maybe maybe it considers like damage done because it knows it can see you swaying a little bit. Yeah. So it actually, instead of attacking you a third time, ignores you and just easily skitters across the webbing towards your companion, Gristle. <laughs> Uh, you note that it doesn't seem to have any trouble moving across the webbing like the rest of you have had uh, as it just skitters right by with its third action, getting right up next to Gristle, ready to bite her, perhaps. No, thank you. But that is its third action, <laughs> and Ingot, it is oh. your turn now. Okay. Uh, Ingot is going to take... It was two actions to because of the difficult terrain to get to where Thi is now correct? yes if you wanted to get to the it's actually going to take you um i would say three actions because uh if you were behind so basically gristle was like right she's basically right at the edge of the web so mm -hmm. to get to where gristle is would be one action and then two actions to get to the but you could do it with all three actions if you wanted to um you could get just to the spider with one action though since it moved right up next to gristle well what i'm gonna do is move up in between Gristle and Thee. Uh, okay. And as I'm moving, you can see that I have a bit of chalk and I'm doing a, a glyph on my hand. And as I come up, I, I crush the glyph and there's this pulse, boom, and I cast Protective Ward. Uh, you and any allies adjacent to you gain a plus one bonus to AC. Uh, and then I'm gonna sustain it until the next turn for, the, for a minute. Okay. So you are just, uh, you, you cast this protective ward. You guys can all see this shimmering field appear around him. And it starts to expand a little bit uh, to envelop some of you, uh, giving you guys, uh, I would say that at this point, you could probably catch the in it. Um, uh, I think you, you can expand it each round, right? Yep, to a maximum right. of so, 30 feet. All right, so it's not going to cover Gristle this round, but uh, Fee, you'll definitely get that the benefit from it. And of course, as the caster, you'll get the benefit from it. So Yeah, so Ingot is, is looking Fee in the eyes and just says, I, I have you. Ingot has you, and casts. Very nice, very nice. Uh, two action spell? One action. Oh, very nice. Uh, great, so I think we move on to Waverly. Okay, uh, and I'm standing next to Gristle, and this creature is right in front of Gristle, right? Oh yeah. How close? Uh, well, are you are you next to Gristle, or do you try to follow behind her? I feel like I would have been next to her if there's room. Okay. Then it's right there. <laughs> the okay. spider is like in your face. Uh, my shield's already raised. Oh yeah. Um, is there any way? Because I probably can't step in front of Gristle, right? Because then I'd be walking into no, the, the spider. No, the spider got right up where, like, it's ready to bite her soon. Okay, so I basically then, like, <laughs> I'm just picturing the the sword, uh, the Gristle's sword just kind of, like, illuminating this giant thing that just happened to, like, walk into our line of sight. And I'm going to kind of, like, 
it's almost a little panicky, but also like a little controlled. Um, and Waverly's gonna raise her hand. And this time, instead of this, you know, silvery gold um, light illuminating from her palm, she is actually going, you're gonna see it kind of glow red hot. Mm -hmm. And she is going to cast burning hands yes. upon the creature. <laughs> so this giant wave of fire just ripples from her palm. And we'll awesome. see if we'll see if I can hit you. Uh, and that would be a uh, basic well, reflex. It's a basic reflex save. Okay, so uh, basic reflex save is the fancy, the shortened version of them saying on a success, I would take half damage. On a failure, I'd take full damage. Uh, but I can also now critically succeed and critically fail on basic saves, uh, which will, again, on a critical success, deal no damage to me. On a critical failure, I would take double damage, and if there's any an additional effect, the spell will tell you if there's an additional effect on a critical failure. So first, let me roll my save. Uh, you do note as the fire lances out, this spider does seem to be particularly agile. Uh, no. It moves pretty quickly and gets a total of 15 on the save. Oh, uh, no! <laughs> that meets Ah, meeting is a success. So on a success, I take half the damage. So I still oh. want to roll damage. It still will singe this, this spider a bit. All right, here it comes. Six. Not bad. Six Twice total? Damage. Yep. <laughs> All right, so I take half of that. Three points of damage. Again, you, you singe it, uh, but it is very nimble. It ducks... Uh, it, maybe it didn't expect you at first. You almost caught it off guard, uh, but it does manage to sort of like dip under most of the blast. It can actually sort of flatten itself against the ground, which is surprising consider it, it, considering its size. Uh, and as it flattens itself, it does get just that singe at the top. I believe you have one action left. I am going to take a five foot step back. Great, so a step back uh, is one action. So you basically just get yourself back a little bit. And because you're not actually in the web yet, uh, you're not in that difficult terrain. If you were in that difficult terrain, you can't actually step because it's difficult terrain, but you're able to uh, where you are, no problem. You back away a little bit. Crystal, you were thinking to yourself as the spider like charges forward and it comes at you. And then you're like, wait, Waverly is right there to save me. And then she just, steps back and leaves you <laughs> facing this thing all on your own and you have to wonder hmm, maybe that wasn't the maybe that wasn't the most desirable result but either well, way it, it is your turn <laughs> oh i appreciate you attempting to show me what you've learned over these past few months uh hanging out in the library uh beverly but let me show you how it's really done and um my weapon's already drawn, right? So I don't have to do that again. Yeah, I, I assume since it's your light source, you're carrying yeah. it around. All right, I'm gonna whack this thing and then hopefully All do right. power attack if I hit it Ooh. this time. So Great, so, so power attack means that your one attack is actually gonna take two actions, but if you hit, you'll roll two damage dice instead of just the one. Yes, and I'm pretty sure it hits because I rolled an 18 and that gets a plus of eight. So that's 26. 26 is a success. It is not a critical success. You didn't hit 10 above its AC, but you do succeed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then, uh, so just two damage dice, right? So two... two damage dice, same bonus damage, though, for your strength. You don't double your strength bonus. Right, okay, so that's a 10 and a 2. God damn it, sorry. <clears throat> 12 plus uh, 3 is a 15. 15 points of damage. You cut deep into this thing as it as it's righting itself after ducking under the blast of flames. Uh, you cut pretty deep into it, and you can tell, like, you actually almost sever one of its legs entirely. It is still kicking, but that was a good strike. Now, you do have a third action left. You could strike again, but because you used power attack, mm -hmm. it would be as if it were your third strike for the round, so you would actually take a minus 10 penalty instead of the minus 5. But it's up to you how you want to do that. Uh, uh, yes, minus, sorry, minus 10 to the... Um... To hit? Yes, if you okay. wanted to attack again. Now keep in mind that if you miss, uh, this is where some of the tactics in, in the three action economy come in, because mm -hmm. you're going to take that minus 10 penalty. You might hit, but if you miss, your opponent is standing right next to you, and it's primed to just use all three actions against you on its turn, because it's already next to you. So uh. some might say that moving away would be tactically better, but that's 
totally up to how you want to play your character. I'm just <laughs> letting you know the sort of the dangers that you're facing. Because uh, minus 10 is a hefty penalty. <laughs> I'm going to say this. Michelle would do the move away thingy. <laughs> <laughs> But Gristle. the character named Gristle Vanderrip yes. Jr. from a long line of proud Fisher people of the town of Atari who is trying to win glory is going to just hit it again. So. <laughs> All right. Do it. Do so it. usually when we're at that third attack penalty, I call this crit fishing. Crit yes. fishing. It's just very bad. Penalty. It's very bad what I've done, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. Yikes, 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 yikes. Um, so I did roll a four plus eight, oh. which is... 12, but that's, you know, it rounds up to a two to hit, which, who knows? Uh, two would be a horrible failure. <laughs> so maybe uh, a little overconfident after getting that first power attack off. Yeah. You cut deep into this thing, uh, and then you swing wildly, almost losing your grip on your blade, uh, but still holding firm. Uh, kind of looking around, perhaps, hoping nobody saw you do that. Uh, as I'm we... just leaving you all some legs to sever also, because you could learn a thing or two from <laughs> battling a great beast such as this. Uh, go, I'm going to just sit, sit back for a second here. <laughs> <laughs> You've done your duty for this round, and now we move on to Thee. Uh, Thee, you're still flat-footed uh, yep. till the end of your turn. Yep. Uh, however, uh, it is your action. What do you do? So... Where is the spider in relation to me, I guess? is The, the spider question. has basically moved back uh, uh, maybe 20 feet away from you at this point. It has moved right. It moved past you right up next to Gristle, yeah. um, who is right at the edge of the spider web. So it's basically hanging out at the edge of its own web, trying to bite her. I'm going to mumble to myself, I shouldn't have tried to be like freaking Gristle. It was stupid and don't get close to things. Then you could bit. <laughs> um... <laughs> So it would be an action to switch to my short bow, correct? Uh, that is correct. Now, so you've got your dagger in hand. You have two options. You can put it away with one action, or mm -hmm. you could drop it as a free action. I'm going to drop it as a free action. All right, so you drop it. So then drawing your bow is just the one action, leaving you two yep. actions left. All right. What a cool guy thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> cool guys don't look at drop daggers. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm going to aim my short bow at the spider and take a shot. All right. You whirl around, arrow knocked and let loose. Um, go That's for it. a 17. A Elf. 17. Yeah. A 17, my friend, is a miss. What? Ooh. Arrow goes whipping past it. Um, Uh-oh. Not quite connecting. I hate this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I said, like he says that specifically to Ingot. <laughs> Ingot is like concentrating on saving your life. <laughs> Um, you know what? I'm I'm gonna st I'm just gonna stay there. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so when mind. you have extra actions that you're not quite sure how to use, one thing that mm -hmm. you can do uh, is try a check to recall knowledge um, mm -hmm. against specific types of creatures. In this case, it would be a nature check. Uh, you spend one action, basically, like. Do you know anything about these creatures? Do you anything about their weaknesses? Do you know anything about their abilities? Uh, if you succeed, I can give you pieces of information uh, about the creature that may help. Um, yeah, let's but it's do just it. one thing that you can try if you're like, I have a third action and don't really know how to use it. I love that. Let's do it. All right. So go ahead and make a recall knowledge uh, nature check. So that's a 15 for nature. A 15. All right. Uh, <laughs> you know, you've heard of people encountering these sort of giant, they're, they're, they're giant hunting spiders. Mm -hmm. um, you already kind of got the fact that they have tremor scent, like they can sense anybody uh, vibrations in their web, which is probably why it knew you were coming and it wasn't so shocked to see you spring at, uh, up at it. Uh, you already do know about the venom. Um, so I will tell you that another thing they can do is they can actually shoot bolts of web and stick people in place. So that is something to watch out for. Uh, am I able to just yell that out so the party? Yeah, it's a free action to talk. Yep. Uh, be careful that it doesn't web you in place. And it's, uh, I guess for Waverly and Gristle, that is definitely a not- Different the, voice. Yeah, that is definitely a different voice. Than the voice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Excellent use of your third action. 
Uh, that does take us to the spider's turn. The spider, mm -hmm. uh, its first action is going to be to try to bite this very shiny person that very nearly killed it in one swing. So it is just going to try to bite, bite, bite. And that is going to hit an armor class 21. Jesus. Oh. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the rats were easy. This is not a yeah. rat. I was really like overconfident as a player and as a character. <laughs> Who are you telling? You're gonna take, <laughs> you're gonna take seven points of piercing damage, oh, and again, right. it just sort of like leaves its fangs in the wound for a moment. So I'm gonna need you to make a fortitude save. Oh, Crystal's oh. tough though. This shouldn't be too hard. I, I do take have, back everything I said. I have so much fortitude. I have a plus seven to it, so I have a total of uh, nineteen. 19 is a success. Uh, as it retracts its fangs, there is this sort of like tingling, burning sensation in your shoulder, but uh, it does not further affect you. Uh, you feel like, haha, you've beaten it. It should never have bought, it should never even tried to poison you. Can't though. be killed. <laughs> what an idiot. Uh, at this point, you can hear Thee shouting something, and the spider actually like turns around. Uh, it sees that both Ingot and Thea are over there, and rather than bite you a second time, what it does is it actually like raises up its abdomen, and as Thea is explaining to you that like watch out for the web, oh. it shoots a bolt of web right at Ingot. Oh no! Right at Ingot. Okay. And that is going to hit an armor class 18. Oh no! Okay, okay. I have a, oh, it's not to show her to, okay, that hits. <laughs> All right. Uh, so as you are like, like you're focusing on this spell, Damn. and this sticky mass of webbing just envelops you suddenly, oh, God. Um, and it gives you the immobilized condition. What that means is that you can't move. You are okay. stuck in place. However, you can on your turn attempt an escape check. Um, an escape check could be acrobatics, um, or you could just try to like uh, make an attack roll to cut your way free. But uh, but either way, other until you do, you are you are immobilized, stuck in place. And as it immobilizes you, perhaps it maybe perhaps it doesn't know that its venom didn't really work on on Gristle, because instead of turning its attention back to her, it just skitters right across the web, right next to you, Ingot, as you're struggling against the web. And it is now your turn. Great. So. Uh, just, uh, you may already know this, but uh, if you want to keep your spell active, your protective ward, you do have to spend one, one of your actions every round will be the sustaining it, which is what allows it to both expand in range and uh, keep it active on you. Yes, and so uh, Ingot sort of nestles in because he's not moving and he's not trying to move. Uh, <laughs> he spends one action on the protective ward to increase okay. the size of it and to keep it going. And hopefully this will include Waverly now. That it'll yes, be so now up. it now it sort of washes over. It actually, Waverly had stepped back, but mm -hmm. now it, it, it envelops Gristle. So now there's this big bu expanding bubble of magical energy and Gristle, you get a plus one bonus to armor class now. Hell yeah. <laughs> As he's concentrating, he's uh, frantically touching like some of the stones that are now covered in this webbing, but sees that two that he needed were free, and he quickly flings them over to the spider. And they are, you know, the small like poppers that you could get at like 4th of July mm -hmm. that you slam down the sidewalk and they snap? Yeah. These explode right in front of the spider's eyes uh, and face, and he's cast Daze. You Daze. jolt them. You jolt the mind of a single target. The jolt deals mental damage equal to your intelligence, which would be four. Okay. The target must attempt a basic will save. If it critically right. fails, loses its first action next turn. Okay. Will save it is. Uh, that is a natural 20. No! <laughs> With a natural 20, my, now my total is 25. What is your spell DC? It's 17, I think. Yeah, 17. 17. So so 25 would normally be a success. However, right. when you roll a natural 20, you bump your level of success up by one. So instead of a regular success, it becomes a critical success. Oh, and no. on a basic save, a critical success means the spell has no effect. Mm. So you try to pop, maybe you get tangled up a little yeah. bit in the webbing and lose your concentration for just a brief moment. And it's not effective. And I gotta uh, keep the protective ward going. So I just let that go and I focus more on the protective ward. Okay. Uh, it was a brave attempt, <laughs> but unsuccessful. Waverly, what do you do? I'm 
many feet away is the spider from me? Uh, at this point, probably 15 feet. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna Some turn of which to... is difficult terrain because of the web. Right. I'm going to turn to Gristle. Are you hurt? Um, like, just a little bit, uh, but yes. Would you like to be healed? Or would you like me to attempt to take down this monstrous creature? Um, I'm totally fine. You can, you know what, have a crack at it. Good luck. Uh, I am totally cool. I am not that injured. You do not need to help me right now. Are you sure? Because I <laughs> yep. can. It would be very easy for me. No, no, it would be uh, much more uh, uh, satisfying to see some of the youth try their hand at the youth. getting glory. <clears throat> Only because you suggested it, I shall do it. Um, and also I imagine that it's, if she's holding the, the sword out, like I probably wouldn't be able to fully see if she's fully, like really injured. So sure, yeah. um, I- You know the truth. <laughs> I'm just gonna if take you wanted a- to. Uh, I don't imagine that in this case, I mean, certainly do it, but only only to sort of give you the breadth of options for you. If you wanted to um, actually sort of determine for yourself how injured she is or is not, you could spend one of your actions to make a medicine check to actually be like, oh, wait, no, I, I can see you're hurt. Uh, or you can ignore that, but it is, it is an option for you I wanted you to know about. <laughs> My leader told me to go smite the creature, so. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> I'm going to take one step forward to be next to, fully next to Gristle. Sure, so you basically just step back to where you were before your last step. Correct, which should put me about 10 feet now from yep. this spider. And mm -hmm. again, I will cast Burning Hands. I'll throw my hand out, and this time, mm -hmm. instead of the warm reddish glow and burst of fire that comes from my hand, the flame is actually even hotter like looking i don't know if that's possible uh and it's more like blue with like mm. yellow and orange at the end um, all right yeah so i'm on need i'm gonna have to make another basic reflex save then mm -hmm. uh oh that is a is a natural one yes <gasps> So a natural one works very similar, yes. but inversely to a natural 20 where uh, normally I would have a 10, which is a failure, but because it's a natural one, it moves my level of success down the track to a critical failure. Tell me what happens on a critical failure. <laughs> um, I don't know what does happen. Uh, the, the description of your spell should tell you if there's an additional effect, otherwise it's just double damage. Uh, um. Is that the same thing as heightened, or I'm not seeing? No, it, in the description, in the basic description of the spell, it'll say like on a critical failure they take persistent damage, or on a critical failure, like if it doesn't say anything, it then it's just double damage. Okay, Sweet. so just double damage. I can definitely do that. Please. It fits roll. with the narrative of it being super hot too. Yeah! Wow! What a coincidence. <laughs> uh, ooh. Okay, so that's ten. So double is twenty. Yeah. 20 points of damage. This time the spider was not paying enough attention behind it, uh, and your blast of flames catches it full in the abdomen. As it's about to rear up and sink its fangs into ingot, you just incinerate most of it. Uh, the spider actually catches on fire. Uh, its legs in almost immediately curl up underneath its body as it sort of falls to the side over onto its back and is just now this like burning husk of bristly fur is dead. <laughs> In Ingot could use some help. Uh, I probably can't see Ingot too well, so I will, I will stay next to Gristle for the time being. Uh, yeah, he's he's basically, he's still within the radius of light. Oh, so okay. the spider was 10 feet away, so Gristle would be 15 feet away from you. Uh, you can get to him, like, he's you can still see him. Uh, uh, Fee is actually sort of just outside the radius of light. You know where he is, uh, but, but he's very difficult to pick out in the darkness. Gristle, perhaps we should go help Ingot. Um, yeah, t totally. Let's go help uh, the few who have been injured in this... Very simple battle. Yes, let us do that thing. <clears throat> I would I would like to now make the medicine check on Gristle. Sure. sure, sure, sure. As she's moving. Ooh, 18. 
18. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can tell that the the bite, she took a pretty serious bite. She was definitely playing off. Like, she winces a little bit uh, as she moves, and uh, she seems to be sort of favoring one arm. Uh, it, she's not close to that. She's not in any kind of critical condition, but, I mean, that was a pretty serious bite. <laughs> There's yeah, no I'm way on, that she... Yeah, to give you numbers, uh, I'm in 13 out of 20 uh, HP right now. Okay, so I'm going to... I'm gonna. Uh, I imagine Gristle would have taken a couple steps forward and Waverly is always a couple steps behind. So she'll just kind of try to run and catch up and, and just touch Gristle. Gristle, oh, you're hurt, please uh, hold steady for a moment. And um, I will cast heal upon Gristle. Okay. Uh, all right. So our, I assume, so heal allows you to use one, two or three actions. And uh, depending on how many actions you use, it actually changes the effect of the spell just a little bit. Uh, with one action, you can cast it and she would get 1d8 hit points back. If you use two actions, you can actually cast it with a little bit of range and it's more powerful. Uh, if you use all three actions to cast it, it will actually heal everybody in a burst, but it'll only heal 1d8 hit points. Um, so it's kind of up to you I how many actions you want to spend. Two actions because I would like to increase the hit points. Okay, so it'll be 1d8 plus 8 hit points restored. Great, here we go. Ah, oh, it's only a 3, sorry. <laughs> 11 Still, points of damage back, almost. Uh, that's uh, more than she needed. Now, oh, of yeah. course, you can't go above your hit point total unless you get something called temporary hit points. If you get something called temporary hit points, that gives you, like, hit point buffer, uh, but these are just regular hit points, so you'll restore yourself back up to full and otherwise be done. Waverly, I, <clears throat> of course, I appreciate you helping me and using your very unique skills. Um, let's just not talk about this with anybody else if that's cool with you though. It's been really, really cool of you to not mention that I was super hurt to anybody else no one else noticed. Oh, well, I do believe earlier we had a brief discussion about communication oh and God. I fear that it is very important that I'm we just, all discuss oh when we're hurt or injured or even just not feeling well because I do have the ability to make you feel better. Ingrid it doesn't feel very well right now. Okay, oh. let's, well, let's, well, let's, uh. let's take, the, take a knee on this and uh, maybe help the, help the dwarf. So um, now that we're no longer in encounter mode, uh, I would say that it's really just a matter of cutting him free from the webbing. So after a few minutes, you just sort of disentangle him from this mass of sticky goo. Uh, <laughs> it's probably incredibly gross, but you are free and no longer immobilized. Uh, Thee, during all of this, I mean, you're still feeling maybe a little bit woozy from the shock of the mm -hmm. venom, but it does not seem to have any other lingering effects. It gives you that sort of temporary stun, but then you're okay. Um, aside from the fact that you were wounded, um, you all notice that there is a tunnel that continues away from this room. Uh, it's and it is pretty clear to you that the spider didn't drag away crates of fish from the fishery basement. There is more exploration to do, but you may find that this is a great chance to sort of catch your breath, uh, recover from some of the other wounds that you've incurred, uh, and you may want to take the opportunity to search through the spider's lair. <clears throat> uh, obviously, Waverly, sorry, uh, go ahead. Oh, Ingot's going to pull Thea aside, actually, uh, okay. during that whole bit of combat and seriously look Thea in the eyes. I, Ingot thinks that we can trust them, and Ingot thinks that we may be in danger that Ingot will not be able to help Thea through. No, I, uh, I got a little bit, uh, too confident in myself. I'm going to leave it to the big greasy one to do that stuff. And I'm going to stay here in the back, safe. Ingot wants thee to be careful. Yes, I appreciate you, Ingot. Thank you. Crystal doesn't hear the two talking, but uh, notices they're like checking in on each other and being like nice to each other, like friends do. Mm -hmm. So I look over at um, uh, Waverly slash Beverly. Um, <laughs> listen, uh, it, Waverly, for that is your name. Uh, yes. <laughs> it is, you are the first person that I've ever had to put under my tutelage. And you know, it's weird that someone listens to what I say. So sometimes when you 
repeat things back to me that I've just said like 10 minutes ago, it's kind of annoying, but also proves that I do just say a lot of things that I don't really think about super hard. So although it's annoying, and yes, you are annoying sometimes, uh, I thank you for perhaps giving me a point of view about myself I didn't quite have before you uh, came to our village. <clears throat> You're welcome, I think. Okay, that was me trying to have a heart-to-heart, -heart, and if that's not working, I can, you know, shelf that and try it again later. It's totally oh, fine. Oh, if you're trying to have a heart-to-heart, -heart, I would love to tell you about the book I was reading earlier. Oh, library. my God. Okay. I think you oh, would God. absolutely adore You know, we, we talk about the book thing a lot, and, uh, uh, listen, and what you said about communication. Oh, yes. May maybe if I can get so injured uh, and then and be a mighty warrior then perhaps the two who are with us could also use some help in that same regard so let us try to be a little more friendly with them uh in case we may need to help them or that we you know am i, am I not being friendly <laughs> i don't know maybe it's the whole vibe i'm putting up and i'm not super sure but let's just give it a shot. And uh, I mean, but that fee person is just talking like 20 different accents. And I don't know if uh, they know that I know, but fuck, I got a sharp ear. I'll tell you that right now. Um, well, please, I, I appreciate you letting me know, but if, if I'm coming across unfriendly, please, I do appreciate knowing in advance because I definitely don't want them to get the wrong impression. Okay, I wouldn't freak out about it. I'm not a really good reader of emotions to be fair. So, but, you know, just do the thing that you do and everyone seems to like you in a weird way. So that's fine. Just be you. Okay. Um, okay, cool. Lesson over. Let's go everyone. And Waverly's gonna pull out her notebook and, and write down really odd notes she was given, like annoying, <laughs> but like sometimes. And, um, and uh, 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 be friend, be more friendly. <laughs> <laughs> this is Gristle, like not knowing how to talk to people at all about feelings. It's, it's very, it's very hard. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, uh, do you think this spider has any cool treasure, like gold or golden eggs or golden spider babies? What, is, what do spiders have? I don't. Do you guys know? Golden oh, um, spider babies. Can I make a lore? I have academ acad academia, academia, academia. Um, <laughs> Word. If you wanted to know anything specifically about the spider, you could always make a nature check. Um, uh, if you wanted to just search around to see if there's anything interesting, you could make a. Per I would. I would make a secret perception check for you, so you would tell me your perception bonus, and I could make a check. Uh, I do not want to search the lair. I want to know about the spider. Okay. So go ahead and make a nature check. Uh, is anybody else doing anything while she's looking through her books, trying to figure out what she knows about hunting spiders? Search the lair. Mm -hmm. All right. So go ahead and tell me your perception bonus. Uh, five. Five? Okay. So as she's flipped through the books, uh, she spends some some time talking with Gristle, and you're 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 hurt, but you uh, you see an opportunity maybe while they're a little distracted to see if there's anything interested. Maybe there's some golden spider babies laying around, as was mm -hmm. as was mentioned. Was and spider. pretty quickly, you find a web wrapped corpse of a small desiccated creature. You realize that this could very easily have been you if the spider had had its way. But pushing past that unpleasant thought, you do notice that there is a sword wrapped around or wrapped up with the body and something in sort of a ratty pouch. Of course, then there's the creature itself, which looks like some, it's really difficult to tell what it is. Um, uh, a, because it's all shriveled up and B, because it's still mostly covered in web. But um, that also may be interesting to investigate if you want to. I'm gonna pick up the pouch and mention sure. the corpse and the sword to the others. Okay. Uh, just a, with a with sort of a, you know, you pick up the pouch sort of surreptitiously, a glance inside. You do note that there's a glass bottle of some red watery liquid inside. Uh, these are very common, uh, well known to adventurers. You note that there's a, there's a healing potion you now have. So mm -hmm. you have a minor healing potion. Uh, anytime you drink a minor healing potion, you immediately recover 1d8 hit points. Cool. That's important because I'm hurt. So I'm yeah. going to hold on to that. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, but the rest of you then hear like, hey, there's something over here from from Thee. There's a there is a sword over here as well as uh, some sort of creature. I I mean, there's a there's a uh, uh, there's a sword over here. And a creature. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> Do, um, does anyone need an extra sword? I quite like mine, and I think it's probably the best one in this town. So, I mean, if anyone needs some garbage that he found, feel free to go at it, kids. Stop being stupid and just look at the sword. I'm in too much pain to care about your stupid nonsense. How dare you? I'm not <laughs> stupid. I'm very, I can read a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ingot is going to take a look at the sword and maybe do some stone cunning to see if there's anything about, like, where it, it was made or... Sure, sure, sure. Or anything? Absolutely. Uh, do you have uh, craft? Are you trained in that at all? I do. I have. Uh huh. I have four points in crafting. Sure, sure. sure. So since, since you're trying to sort of determine something specifically about the the make of the blade, I'm going to have you roll a craft check, but you can add your stone cutting to it. I, I will allow that. Um, uh, I also note that as you cut, I mean, the, the immediate thing that you notice without any other uh, check is that this sword is very, very well made, and mm. there is an emerald in the pommel. Oh, uh, that is a 19 on the craft check. Sure. Um Looking around, uh, you this this blade is probably the, the style of it mm -hmm. is very very old, um, and it is very finely crafted. Uh, it was even though it is um, sort of it obviously has that sort of decorative flair to it. It is fully functional, like it is a it is a it is a blade designed for battle. Mm. Um, but it just seems uh, unusually well made. Um, looking at this little creature, do you have society by any chance? I do. I have quite a bit of society. Can you make me a society check? Mm hmm. Oh, wow. High math 26. Oh, yeah, there you go. Uh, this little desiccated, webbed up, cocooned creature, uh, you clear away some of it. It is a small, scaly little creature you easily recognize as a kobold. Oh. And looking at the craftsmanship of the blade and looking down at this kobold, uh, they didn't make this thing. Does this, not add like, up. <laughs> no way. They, they, this, this little guy got lucky or killed somebody for it or something. They certainly, you know, far finer a weapon than you're mostly used to seeing for those guys. If it is okay with everyone, Ingot will relieve this kobold of its blade and he'll pick up the sword and sort of attach it to a belt. All right, you have a short sword uh -huh. in your inventory. Do you need help uh, becoming trained in that new weapon that you've got there, uh, uh, in Ingrid? Perhaps Ingrid appreciates the offer. Perhaps we, we get out of here, we can uh, have a, a round of, of tutelage. I wouldn't mind that. <laughs> Gristle is being nice to Ingrid. Did Ingot do something wrong? I'm trying a new thing and everyone is really just pointing it out and it's really irritating. <laughs> oh, that's better. Uh, just so you know, Ingot, the short sword mm -hmm. deals 1d6 points of piercing damage on a hit. Nice. Uh, it also has the agile trait. So as I mentioned, oh, on yeah. the second attack, it only take a minus four penalty. And on a third attack, a minus eight penalty. So it's nice. a little easier to use quickly. It also has the finesse trait, which means you can substitute your dexterity bonus for your strength bonus when you're calculating your to hit roll. So you use uh, your dex your dex bonus. Um, and it is versatile, which means you can deal slashing or piercing damage. You can stab or cut. You decide. Nice. Uh, yeah. That was a pretty good item. <laughs> yeah. How's the rest of the party looking as far as health-wise? Uh, I, I mean, feeling. yeah, Thee is making no secret of the fact that he's wounded. <laughs> I'm going to go over to Thee and um, and just kind of uh, hold my hand up and sure. he would notice like some warm, like, uh, you know, golden glow from her hand. Sure. Perhaps now, just so you know, um, before you do that, I do want to let you know that uh, you can use the spell heal. Uh, it works just fine, but you do have a number, limited number of spell slots for the day. And another option for you, if you wanted, is you could actually, if you are trained in medicine, you can use the treat wounds action. 
where you can actually, you guys can spend 10 minutes. Uh, basically, you sew him up and stitch him up and slap some mud on it and actually physically restore hit points to him uh, if you don't want to use the spell. But it is totally up to you where you want to go with that. Hmm. I will heal him with heal. Okay. <laughs> Thank well, it's, I want to walk simple. up to him and ask first. Um, perhaps you could use a little mending. I would genuinely appreciate that. Thank you. And, and she'll kind of just reach out to his shoulder and cast heal. Mm -hmm. I'll assume you're going with the two action version since it's uh -huh. just better. 16 points back. Whoa. Nice. I rolled max. All right. Because <laughs> I had six health. Oof. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wounds just vanish under her touch as if they had never been. The pain is nothing more than a memory now, and you are feeling quite a bit better. You, you're very good at that. Thank you. She is my best student. <clears throat> Only student. A best student. I taught her well. Are you the reason that that one's still alive? Um, we just met quite recently. Um, <laughs> what? But, uh, yes, only just perhaps a week or so ago. Which shows how much I can teach someone in just a short amount of time. I'm a great teacher, it turns out. Well, I didn't know that about in. myself. But, but I have been me. studying my whole life. I'm surprised she's lived this long without you. Oh. I can hear everything you're saying, little dude. I dear, well... Shut up. Well, <laughs> she is a mighty war warrior. Warrior. Wow, can't say that with an accent. Um, and, um, but I did acquire the the healing arts from my father, who was quite gifted. So, um, perhaps I have him to thank. You're looking for a thesis, you said, right? Oh yes. Maybe consider something in healing. You're good at that. Thank you, I shall consider it. I was hoping to do something different than others in my profession, since I fear that every single cleric is always writing their thesis on healing or the undead, but perhaps I could find a twist to it. You're the undead. <laughs> oh no, that would be an abomination. But interesting. Indeed interesting, yet an abomination. They must be smited from this world. That's what everybody else is doing. <laughs> and with good reason. Beasts are meant to be uh, destroyed, it is the way of things, uh, in order to gain glory and save those who are too weak to help themselves. Why I think, did you uh, say that with a question? I, d that, I just said uh, that is how I talk the, and I do not like you analyzing every word that I say. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I don't really like us uh, sitting around chit-chatting in a spider's lair about uh, theses and how they're books and not tables. And, you know, uh, do you think there's anything else weird in this spider chamber we found, or is it just one secret sword and a kobold? I guess I'm asking you, Thea, did you find anything else you're not telling us about? Oh, yes, yes, I found a health potion. <laughs> oh, what now? A health potion. Oh, cool, you should keep that, because you got super beat up last time. <laughs> Don't worry about it, it happens to all of us sometimes, just some more than others. <laughs> Do you think- I'm gonna steal from you again. Oh, okay, well, <laughs> they, we talked about that. I thought we squashed that beef, but if you want to bring it back up again, my sword is ready to meet your- <laughs> Uh, not, this might be a perfect uh, uh, yes. time to interject and discuss communication. This is very important, as we've spoken previously about the importance of communication, and I think that, Gristle, as our leader, um, you should be instilling the idea of proper communication so that we all may work together in harmony. Okay, uh, I think what uh, she's trying to say is ground rules. Ground rules sounds good. Um, if you have something that can help the whole party, say that. Don't just hide it. That's weird. Um, if you need healing, uh, Beverly would love to heal you. So just tell her. Oh, it's not a nuisance. To, yes, I said that. It's not a nuisance at all. Uh, just uh, you know, ask her and she'll just whip out those healing potions. But ma'am, um, we should stop talking about the thesis because I thought that was pretty much set in gold. And uh, I think we are, that's all the rules. And I think we can hit them all. Yes, uh, raised him there. Um, did, uh, what was your name again? Uh, Thim Thimble. You won't remember. Uh, I didn't hide it. You asked me and I told you. 
holding back information is a form of lying, and I don't think you uh, might have ever heard that before. Oh, I was no. bleeding. Oh no, okay, we are moving. <laughs> <laughs> Ingot moves forward down the tunnel. Oh, Ingot suddenly good. gets very uncomfortable and just starts wandering away from the group. Oh, I, I follow yelling, another rule, the, another new rule of this team is that we stay together. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you move beyond the spider's lair. Uh, <laughs> now, of course, you're back into exploration mode. So are we carrying over the same actions as before? Does anybody want to switch it up at all? Um, you let me know. Yeah, okay. I'm going to switch it up. Uh, I guess because detect magic is a cantrip, but mm -hmm. it does, it, using it in explore mode, does that count towards my prepared spells? So cantrips are cool in that once you prepare them for the day, you actually can cast them as many times as you want. Got it. Uh, you don't have to worry about it. You just it. have many you want. Uh, it's your first level spells and beyond that are going to have how many you can prepare each day. And then once you use it for the day, that's all you that's get that. until you guys sleep, recover, and do your daily preparations the following day. So detect magic, you can keep it going all day if you want. It just requires that concentration. That's all. Choo-choo. Here we go. Uh, I will note that when you cast it, there is a brief uh, additional ping, uh, but then you remembered that Fee said he had a healing potion, so you sort of filter that out. Uh, but then there's nothing else. You don't think that sword actually has a magical aura. It's just very finely made. I was wondering. Um, and actually, uh, you had made a craft check on it earlier, and it yes. was a success. I will tell you that uh, it, uh, because of that emerald set in it, uh -huh. uh, it's actually going to sell for quite a bit more than your, your average sword. You could probably catch five gold pieces for it. Uh, normally, you would sell it for maybe five silver. So uh, this is it's, uh, quite an increase in its monetary value if you ever choose to sell it. Mm -hmm. Ingot will make a note. Indeed. Beyond the spider's lair, the tunnel continues, turning slightly west and then s also continuing to curve around... Um, almost south and west, almost doubling back in on itself. Uh, but you're still moving deeper. So even if you did double th fully back on yourself, you would really just be below where you were previously, almost directly below the, uh, the fishery basement itself, at a, if, it, if it curves enough. Um, uh, on your right, you do find a section of tunnel that has been barricaded. But at a cursory glance, you think that the barricade was actually built recently. Mm -hmm. There are drag marks in the dirt, and scoring on the stone indicates that the boxes, barrels, and bits of old furniture was actually piled up here not too long ago. The other option that you have at this point would be to actually continue down the tunnel you were currently moving on, uh, which continues to curve again west and, west and south. Um, so you can take apart the barricade uh, to move through there and see what what perhaps? Um, um, I was going to say before we moved on was that uh, yeah. I'd like to switch my my exploration to uh, search. I feel that Crystal was um, a little jealous of that cool sword that Thee found, and like, and because I was too busy pretending like it wasn't cool, I missed out on something neat. So I'm going to RP that into searching a lot unnecessarily. <laughs> no, that, that's that's perfect. What is your uh, perception bonus? Um, percep is plus five. Plus five, okay. So I went ahead and rolled you a secret perception check. Uh, I don't like secret. these. I don't like not knowing if I for real know or not. <laughs> <laughs> That's the beauty of them, though, is that you don't is know it, whether you did something because it, it wasn't there or because you just got a lower high roll. <laughs> All right. So uh, you're first to spot this barricade. Uh, you note that while most of the furniture and the box, like this is, it does look like, uh, since you're searching around, it looks like some of the material used to make this barricade are like some, is some, like you actually see some stamps from some of the independent fishing boats. Uh, and it looks like maybe whoever took the fish has like been breaking up some of the barrels and boxes after emptying them and using them to build up part of this barricade. Perhaps they are sort of trying to ward off anybody who would come after them. Okay, team, this is what is known as a red herring. <laughs> we here in Atari have a lot of fish and the related analogies. <clears throat> anyway, uh, I noticed that these this barricade is made of the boxes from the local fishermen around here and probably the ones that were up in that storage room. So this is like a kind of, hey, uh, we're blocking something here. We don't want you to go here. Maybe we should take it apart. 
What do you say? We... It's like a wonderful idea to me. And we should take apart red herrings. Um, yeah, sometimes. Ah, uh, fishing. Yes, ask me any questions you want about fish. I grew up in a fish family, but uh, I'm now in the warrior class, so it's a whole different thing. <clears throat> anyway. How did you become a warrior then? Uh, if you grew up in a fish family, that's a quite an impressive story. Perhaps I should know for my thesis. <laughs> I feel like your thesis is trying to get back at me. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> well, I feel like I told you this when you first uh, went under my tutelage, uh, Beverly, is that even though I grew up in this village, I traveled abroad for a bit, like a yearish, uh, to do warrior training. And it was pretty cool, um, but I, I didn't really find a lot of battling or glory to be had in the farmlands around Otari, so I just kind of came back and I'm trying to win some honor for my town and my family and my, you know, two dads. It's like a whole thing. It's very complicated. And how does the fish play into that story? Which one now? You said you come from a fish family. Yeah, yes. Are you fishermen? Okay, like the family, like my, my, my dads are fishermen. They, well, okay, my dad's pickle fish. That's a different, it's like a subset of the fishing industry. You have the people who catch the fish, the people who manufacture to get the fish and uh, break them down. You have people who manufacture the fish and different products. And then you get the pickle fish people. And those are my people and they're great, but- I uh, apologize, I should not have pressed into this right now because I fear that the situation we're in probably weighs heavy on you in that we are searching for missing fish. If this were your family it was happening to, that would be awful. You must have so much compassion for um, Miss Tandeville. Yes, that's why we're doing the quest. Mm -hmm. Oh, wonderful. Well, then we should find out what happened. Y yeah, for, yes, for sure. <laughs> that, so, you know, anyway, this wall is <clears throat> it, the clue. This is the clue, right? And like, Thea is literally just looking at <laughs> Gristle, raising his hand. <laughs> yeah oh yes the sorry I, you know i i'm just i'm so tall it's so hard for me to see down there what's up i thought that we were being honest with each other that was like one of your things uh, uh, all of our thing not my thing group everyone thing for the betterment of the group yes so wait you, ad you admit that you were keeping things because you don't think you have to do it you just did that you're bad at the lying and your I eyes don't... your eyes do this thing where like you make up a lie and then you go left right left right I don't like how intensely you're staring at my eye movements. That seems a little weird. You're the kind of person I see in a tavern and make half my days living off of. I'm trying to help you. What's your living again? Stealing. <laughs> oh. I feel like before it was something different. Am I, is this new information for anyone else? I do many things and I'm trying to be honest with you because I don't want you to die. Oh, well, that's that's very nice. I, I like that part. That's, you know, that's yeah, so cool. Yeah, so far, I actually haven't lied to you. You've lied more than I have. It's kind of shocking. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I could be shocking because it's probably you've never met anyone like me before. So mm -hmm. that's fair. No, I, I have. I've I've made a decent amount of money. I definitely have. Um, okay, hold on. Oh, um, so what are you doing in Atari again? Stealing. I, how many times do I have to say this? No. <laughs> um, <laughs> the is very good. I do believe a lot of truths have been revealed here in this moment. It was quite wonderful to know a little bit about your family and where you come from, Gristle. Um, the, uh, it was nice to learn more about your occupation. Perhaps we can chat further about that later, and and perhaps Seren Ray might be able to help guide you in the future toward making better decisions for your life. Um, Ingot, I mm. I would love to know a little bit more about you. Um, where are it, you from? Tell me about your family. Ingot comes from a town north, a mining town. Ingot comes from dwarven stock, rock dwarves. Ingot is very proud, but Ingot fell into the magical arts. Not exactly 
Ingot's family's forte. Oh, did they disapprove of your occupation? Mm -hmm. One could say disapprove. Well, then we must show them just how powerful and magical you are then, and then they shall approve of you. Ingot thanks Waverly, but does not need the approval of Ingot's parents to feel proud. Well, isn't that even more wonderful? Finding the strength and proudness within yourself and not needing it from others. I shall write that down. Perhaps oh. that would make a good thesis. Nope, nope. I think the first one you had was super good. Uh, it, it, uh, it, it, you know, uh, it's really nice to hear that there's others in this group who have strived to become something better or different than what they were raised in. And I, uh, all right, I'll be, I'm going to be real clear right now. I might have misjudged uh, you, you newbies, but you're pretty cool. You kick some ass back there. And I think we're going to be a great team as long as, uh, you know, Thi and me can stop fighting about facial movements. <laughs> Oh, yes, I do believe that we're all going to be fast friends. Well, Ingot appreciates and acknowledges Ingot's strength. Ingot is unable to move this barrier and could use some physical help. Oh, oh right, sorry, barrier. Mm -hmm. Yes, let's get to this uh, ba barrier, I guess. <clears throat> sure. In terms of the barricade, uh, you could just rip it apart. Uh, it would take maybe 10, 15 minutes worth of work. Doesn't look like it would actually be difficult, but that would certainly be a noisy endeavor. However, mm -hmm. uh, if any of you have any basic tools, like a repair kit would be sufficient, uh, you could use crafting uh, in an attempt to sort of more carefully dismantle this barricade. Um, trickier to do, mm -hmm. but if you're successful, you might be able to do it a little less, uh, less obviously. And I know that you were concerned that perhaps uh, your, your, your quarry was using this as a barrier to where they might be hiding. So it's up to you. Uh, you could just rip it apart. You could make a check to try to dismantle it carefully. Either way, it's just a matter of spending the time doing it. If perhaps some of us can't assist in breaking down this barrier, I'm happy to use the muscles that uh, the gods gave me to rip it apart for you all. Um, perhaps some of the other group could go check the other way just in case this is not oh, yes. the thing. I shall stay and aid you with my strength. Okay, well, that's that's fine. That's fine. Uh, but if you two would, uh, if uh, <clears throat> Inglinglot and uh, uh, Theseus would like to go check the uh, other way a little bit, but not too far. Don't get stuck in a spider trap. That'd be real bad. You're free to do so. Oh, uh, excuse me, Gristle. You did say earlier that. Um, oh my God! You know, <laughs> round rules. Um, to stick together. You did say that, so I'm just curious. Remember. Should I scratch that off my yeah. list? For ground rules, I've been I've been keeping note. Okay, let's amend that then. Uh, groups of two, uh, uh, at least two, two minimum of two. Groups of two. Okay. Minimum yes. of two, and Great. if we split, yeah, don't go by yourself. I guess that's the new new rule. I gotta really get used to the saying things out loud to you all and having them remembered. It's real. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, what I said is what I said. Okay. Uh, so my first question is, those of you tearing apart the barricade, are you just ripping it down? Uh, again, it's just a matter of taking some time to work, but you know it'll be a, a, a noisy affair. Uh, I think so. I don't have any, um, equipment that can make it quiet. I'm pretty know. sure you have a barricade that has basic oh. tools in it. <laughs> Do I? No, I looked, I thought, Where I looked at Where did that come it. from? <laughs> it says, like, soap. Torches, what was good? <laughs> doesn't say like tools in it at all, but okay. um, uh, but do you oh, have something I, I, on there called repair kit? Uh, I thought like it above above the list of adventuring pack stuff, yes. <laughs> ah, there, oh, wow, you found the you found the repair kit, which has a bunch of basic tools in it, which you could use to make a craft and check. And that's how you, you play Pathfinder, to. you find the hidden <laughs> items on your character sheet that you put there. That's how you play it. Um, I'll, okay, I'll do that one, I'll do that, okay. Cool. So I'll just need you to make a craft check as you try to more carefully uh, sort of pry loose some of these barricade pieces and try to do it uh, in a more orderly fashion so that perhaps you can do it quietly. Um, 14? 
14. Uh, yeah, you managed to sort of pick it apart. Uh, uh, you pry loose some of the boards. Uh, you sort of stack things very neatly against the tunnel wall. Uh, it's a very neat and smooth operation. At the end of maybe you know 15 minutes or so, you have a way forward. There's a, a tunnel opens up, winding a little bit northward ahead of you. And uh, <clears throat> I guess, I don't really know, but did, did he and Ignat stay? And, and help, oh. or did they peace out? <laughs> I think, that was a good question. Yeah, Ingot was going to move as soon as the directive came his way, and mm-hmm. he's going to get out of the range of the artificial light and start to use okay. his dark vision uh, to see down this tunnel. Sure. Yeah, uh, Thee, you, you hear that uh, Gristle's like, go down the dark tunnel, but she has the only source of light that the party's currently using, and even your sharp elven eyes would be hard-pressed in the deeper darkness. However, Ingot, you have dark vision as a dwarf mm-hmm. and can move quite easily, uh, seeing quite well. You do note that the tunnel winds southward, and you may walk for a good five minutes, and you can sort of still occasionally hear your companions behind you. You have not seen anything out of the ordinary. The tunnels wind deeper onward. Uh, it's up to you whether you want to press on from that point. Um, I can say too, to go back. As, as we're moving down, you can see that this is maybe sort of a practice thing between the two of them, especially when moving in darker areas. Either Ingot is going to follow Thee or Thee is going to follow Ingot. And Mm-hmm. Uh, Ingot is trusting, even though he can't hear Thee, yeah. uh, that it's we're moving according to plan. So we'll keep going down as long as there's nothing that's popping out. Sure. And I'll actually, uh, uh, I would like to make a stealth uh, move. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, you can absolutely be moving, moving stealthily. Uh, that'll be a secret check. Um, mm-hmm. So go ahead and tell me your stealth bonus. Well, it's one. <laughs> All right. So you do your best to move quietly, <laughs> yeah. just like Fee taught you. He always tells you. He told you, he gave you some tips, and you do everything you can to make sure that you're making any noise. You stick to the shadows. I mean, everything's in shadow. Mm. Uh, now, Fee, within just a few feet away from the, your companions, I mean, you're in total darkness. Even after your eyes adjust, like you can make out some vague shapes, um, but you would definitely be sort of just like hand on on Ingot's shoulder, like having him lead the way if, if you want to continue right. with him. Yep, I trust him. I'll do that. Okay. So you begin making your way and you get about 10 minutes down the tunnel and you can see Ooh. that there is a room ahead um, or a chamber of some kind. And it's still dark. You just right. know, like you, Ingot, uh, you can see it's going to open up into a room of some kind. Uh, and I need you to make a perception check. And I'll let you just go ahead and roll the perception check straight up. Okay. I will say, as soon as he detects a change in the atmosphere and it becomes a room, he's going to stop and and tell T to stop. Because that was a seven. A seven. Uh, Yeah, there's a room ahead. Yeah. This was what Ingot was waiting for, though. Uh, Mm -hmm. And he'll, like, signal to turn around and he'll start moving back. Sure. So you get the signal, you turn around and head back. And just at about the time that you get back into the circle of magical light, uh, that is when Waverly and Gristle are, are, they have cleared the way now. Uh, So you have the tunnel northward, and then obviously, Ingot, you know about the room to the south and west. The tunnel, or rather the, the corridor, extends into a large room. Ingot was not able to see further, but we could continue that way. Well, in the spirit of communication <clears throat> and team building, uh, what do you all say? I cannot make the decision for uh, all of us, but uh, there's something weird about this barricade. It is fishy. <laughs> I got that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the ticker from the game. Um, I would personally like to keep going down this path of the barricade. I don't know if it was the kobolds who made this, but I mean, it's a possibility and they're kind of dumb. So I feel like they would make a barrier with very obvious items uh, signaling the way, but that's just one person's opinion. So this barricade, it's not like it's necessarily a doorway. It's blocking something off. Yeah, they had blocked off the, the path. Okay, well, um, 
my only concern is it's blocked off. It's not a way that they would come and go necessarily. If they came, they probably had to go down the way that uh, Ingot and I went. Yes. yes. Perhaps they put the barricade here because they want people to go down that pathway. Yes. So if we choose to go through the barricade, maybe we will be catching them by surprise. A red herring. <laughs> Yeah, yes, I think maybe you've got... I'm not actually 100% sure that I've got it either, but I think that might be it. Well, listen, we've taken all this time to break down this funny, weird wall. Uh, maybe just check it out real quick, and if it looks good, hang out. If it looks bad, go the other way. <laughs> maybe? Yes, yeah. perhaps. <clears throat> uh, cool, I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> So you're making your way down the newly opened tunnel. <clears throat> it isn't too far down, where it takes a sharp turn to the right, um, leading you for a little bit further east, and you actually open up into a room that, actually, Waverly, you may find particularly exciting or concerning, depending on your exact uh, uh, position on this. Uh, you actually find an ancient burial vault. <gasps> And in the middle of this room, there is a strange torch with a blue flickering flame. There are alco alcoves that line the wall, each one containing a rotten wooden coffin. And in the center of the room, uh, near where this torch is, there is a raised platform holding a stone sarcophagus. Nobody touch anything. I yeah, would like to ever. roll all the knowledge checks on the blue flame and the sarcophagus on the all platform. All of the knowledge. <laughs> sure. Uh, roll me, I don't know, um, uh, religion or arcana? Uh, okay, I will do religion. Sure. If I get to, oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> eight. <laughs> um, you recall in your readings, like, there are like actual ruins beneath Otari. I mean, a lot of the tunnels that you've moved through, uh, they're not like, they're, they're really natural tunnels that are sort of interconnected. Um, but there are actual like spaces, lost spaces beneath Otari where people um, dug out and, and built things. And, and uh, some of them have flooded out. Uh, some of them are simply lost to time. Some of them may never have existed at all. That's all you really, like, maybe this is just one of those spaces that you, uh, but you don't recall anything specific. It's just that like, this is definitely a burial vault, um, but you don't know anything about it. You don't recall hearing anything specifically about it in the in the writings. And you don't recall anything specifically about the, the torch. Um, how how I think there's big nothing the, that strikes you as, it's not like a symbol for anything specific that you know about. How big do the coffin like graves look? Do they look like they're uh, human sized or like more dwarf sized? I uh, know they look human sized. Uh, it looks like, uh, yeah. Would I be able to determine creatures? any culture if I did like a lore academia or so uh, society? I would allow a society for sure. Great. Could I add my stone cunning and look at the uh, coffins and the, the room itself? Uh, from where you are right now, so there's only the one stone sarcophagus. From where you are, sort of at the edge of the chamber, uh -huh. um, you can't really get, like, you don't know if there's any detail on the lid. You don't know anything about it. So I wouldn't allow you to use that uh, from here. If you want to move into the room, but mm -hmm. I don't want I don't want to put you in that position because I know that Waverly had specifically said, hey, yep. everything hold up. <laughs> I appreciate that, and Ingot is going to listen. So from afar, right. yeah. a, uh, a 12 for society. Sure. Uh, again, uh, with with the detail that you can see around you, you, there's nothing, there's no like sigil that sparks anything. Uh, I mean, you've maybe heard that again, like there there are ancient ruins beneath Otari, but you don't know anything about like who this might have belonged to. You don't recall any stories about anybody specifically being buried here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can can I look at the ground like as as a thief who has gone into places and stolen from things? I want to look mm -hmm. at the ground to see if there's like an accumulation of dust to kind of mm -hmm. gauge when the last time someone has gone mm -hmm. through here was. Sure. Uh, go ahead and make a perception check. I'll let you just roll that perception check yourself. All right. Seventeen. Seventeen. You actually do five. note that the dust looks like it has been relatively recently disturbed. 
Okay. There are tiny, not tiny, uh, but smaller, like clawed footprints. Not boot prints, not not like footprints, but like you're you're thinking back to like the cobalt. And you're like, you're yeah. wondering maybe they've been in here. The cobalt was definitely in here, and very recently, actually. Hmm. Which, oh, this is all hmm. so exciting. <laughs> I've always wanted to explore underneath Otari. I've only heard about the ancient ruins and read about them, but I've never thought I'd actually be standing in them, and no less in a burial chamber. Oh, it's so exciting. Yes, Inga too has heard of these burial grounds. They could be for anyone. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I've totally heard about this too. <laughs> I'm from here. I would know about it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I am concerned, though. I'm not remembering anything about a blue flame candle, but it is odd it would be burning down here when we haven't come across anyone who could possibly light it. Ingot. He peers think... into the crystal. I think I might know where your sword came from. Oh. And he pulls out the, the sword. He sure. hands it over to Thee. Because it's it's got like the the gem at the bottom, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, Inga, you had noted that it was indeed a very old make uh, and mm. certainly not something the kobolds would have crafted themselves. There is a chance they stole this from the dead. I might be a thief, but... Not a grave thief. Perhaps you are saying we should return this to the rightful owner. Yes. Potentially. I do think that would be a wonderful idea. For Waverly. we have to properly guide them to the other side, and if an item of theirs has been stolen, I can only imagine the turmoil they must be facing. Can you sense where this belongs? Uh, uh, well... Mm, that would be awesome. Can I? <laughs> what, what would I? Maybe you could just look for a symbol is that, that like looks an like. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is that like perception or an arcana? Detection? I mean, there, there's no like, there's no like. <laughs> the sword, sword goes here. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, there really isn't any Saturday. obvious sign of it. However, just looking around, basic stuff. The most prominent coffin is the stone sarcophagus if this was like an important thing chances are it would be in the most fancy burial site but you're real but ultimately you would be guessing at that point if you're wondering look for the one that might have been disturbed mm. well this one here and she points to the sarcophagus in the center like on the raised platform it seems more important than the rest. Perhaps the sword was stolen from that one. Should I try to return it? And Ingot holds out the sword. Better than Ingot trying. I'm not going in <laughs> I'll there. grab it with, with one hand very awkwardly. She does not know how to hold a sword at all. Um, okay. <laughs> and she will have her shield raised. Okay. And she will slowly walk toward um, the platform. Okay. Some graves are cursed. I know, that's all I'm thinking yeah. about, but she wouldn't know that. Oh, uh -oh. hey, I don't really know anything about uh, ghost stuff, uh, uh, assistant, but uh, will like, a ghost come up there and try to like bite you? Like, How does this work? It's well, bad. It's often bad. Right, that's what I'm thinking. I don't know anything about graves and, and <laughs> dead people, but... So I'll just turn around and face them the real quick. There are two options here. We lay the sword with its proper owner so that the dead may rest and and continue on their journey. But there is a possibility that perhaps disturbing the undead here, um, which it seems they've already been disturbed, um, could trigger a form of reaction. Um, and what we like to call it is an abomination and I'm hoping it is the first, and I am hoping that we um, do not have to face the undead, for it is quite troubling, and also quite sad. Well, Beverly, if this is something you feel strongly about, then 
go do it, and come what may, we will be here for you. Yes. They must rest peacefully and continue their journey. Um, and I will just walk right up. Short bow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do want to be clear that when Gristle says we'll be here for you, she does mean back at the entrance yeah. of the room. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Not near you to help, right? <laughs> I've been like, I'm like halfway in the room, I think. Maybe. Oh, you're halfway in the room. I don't know. <laughs> we didn't talk about it. Like at the level, like right before the platform, and then I'm the one that went up on the platform. That's yeah, 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 yeah. I thought we were like, all right. oh, you know. Oh. <laughs> Waverly, you walk up to the stone sarcophagus, and you can see there is a lot of disturbance here. Looks like perhaps this was a recently disturbed site. The lid is on, but it's like slightly askew. Um, you see a lot of the dust has been disturbed and there's like some broken crumbled stone beneath. The torch is right next to you. You note that it does not emit any heat. There's no heat from the flame. Detect magic? Uh, there is magic here, yes. Um, what do you do? I will turn behind, like, over my shoulder to whisper, uh, I think Ingot's right behind, like, ish behind me. Sure. Um, there is a presence of magic. Ingot trusts Waverly. Um. <laughs> uh, and you said that the lid is a little askew? Yeah. I don't want to touch it, but I would like to look in it. Okay, I mean, it's... It's really dark in there. You would have to like, I mean, and the light spot, like the, with the way, like you would have, like it, it'd be really tough to kind of like, you could try to look, like right, you see I, like I maybe will... the edge of some stuff. Like it's nice not... light upon my shield. Okay. okay. I was gonna say I could run over with my sword, but whatever. But even be. still like, like it, you just had like this tiny sliver of a crack in there. So you're trying to like angle the light from your shield and the light on the sword goes out when you put the light on your shield. Uh, you can only have one active at a time and, um, so you sort of angle the shit, almost like a flashlight at that point. You're looking in there and in this, you catch maybe some like cloth or something. Like it, it's, it, again, it's just a sliver of a crack that you can see through. Would the sword fit in if I tried to lower it in? No, barely. You, you, would, be, you would be hard pressed to get more than like a piece of paper in there. And nowhere else on the tomb itself uh, or sarcophagus itself, does it look like the sword rests? Yeah, there's a there's like one of the library book drops, and it says "sword goes here." Oh, oh perfect! I put the sword no, there. No, I'm just kidding. There's <laughs> there's no sword slot. Damn it! Um, uh. Crystal, I think we have to remove the top of the sarcophagus to be able to reunite this sword with its proper owner. Um, I fear I don't have the strength to do it myself. Well, well, if you're looking for the strong person of the party, of course I will <laughs> help you move that thing. Um, listen, if a ghost jumps out of this, we're going to have to really talk about uh, boundaries with dead stuff. But, you know, let's just give it a shot. I can promise you it won't be a ghost. I cannot promise you it won't be an undead. Okay, well, let's just get this over with then. And I pull over the top of the sarcophagus. Gently, gently, with respect. <laughs> Say that so, before I pull. <laughs> <laughs> you respectfully shove this stone slab off the sarcophagus. You see lying on an ancient desiccated corpse is this elaborate uh, gold emblazoned shield with a lion's face on the front of it beautiful piece of work but your wonder at seeing this treasure is cut down by a pang of sudden dread as movement in the darkness catches your eye oh no suddenly several intense puffs of of force or air or something uh ring out and four of the rotten wooden coffins oh. the lids just blow off, oh, no. flying up, striking the ceiling, and then clattering to the ground. You watch as a skeletal hand grasps the edge of the coffins of each of them, 
and a skeletal figure like pulls itself into a sitting position to regard you with a cold, dead eyes. And just as you're about to like back away, Waverly, you cast one glance down just as a rotting hand reaches up to grasp at your throat. <gasps> and at that point, we will end our adventure. Ah. <laughs> oh, I knew it. Waverly oh, said no ghosts. No. They're not ghosts. It's They're the coming. ghosts. Oh, They're coming to get you. They're not ghosts. I will tell but, you yeah. that. It's uh, like you, the same thing. <laughs> definitely not ghosts. <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, but do not worry. Do not be too sad. There are plenty more troubles in Atari that need fixing. <laughs> and the adventure is going to continue next week, Wednesday, 6 p.m. Pacific, right here. Uh, if you're looking for some more awesome RPG content to tide you over, until then, you should definitely follow the other channel that I run stuff on, twitch.tv slash the dat network. That's the D-A-T network. We have a number of shows running weekly and a complete schedule can be found on the channel page or you could follow us on socials. We're at the net network everywhere. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We're all the time over there. Uh, we stream live actual plays Friday, uh, of Pathfinder. Saturday, it's Starfinder. And then Tuesday evenings, we've got Pathfinder first edition that we are we're streaming. So uh, we have a variety of casts, GMs. I run the Friday show. Make sure that you come check it out. Uh, that is again at the DAT network, the D-A-T network on Twitch. Uh, if you wanna start some of your own Pathfinder adventures, I cannot recommend the Pathfinder beginner box enough. We are all having a fantastic time. It's a perfect introduction to the exciting tabletop role-playing game experience. And it is available now on paizo.com. You can easily run the adventure using Roll20, uh, which has a fully loaded and ready to play module available on the Roll20 marketplace. Uh, we actually may be getting to use Roll20 uh, in the coming episodes. Um, my players, of course, as they mentioned at the beginning of the stream, they're all over the TTRPG scene. Uh, is there anything that anybody specifically would like to plug before we say goodbye? This was so much fun. Thank you for having yeah, us. Yeah, thank you, Jim Jim, <laughs> yeah. for the incredible storytelling. Hey, no problem. It was and, a good uh, time. You guys did most of the storytelling. Those are some really fun characters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you to the Dat Network for, uh, you know, making the show happen and Paizo for, uh, you know, also making this happen for us. Thank you. All righty. Well, we're going to head out of here again. Thank you to Paizo for hosting us. Thanks for the, to the Dat Network for, for putting the stream together. And thanks to all of you for watching us. This was a ton of fun. I can't wait to see what happens next week on Troubles in Atari. We're out of here for the night. We'll see you all later. Goodbye. Goodbye, friends. Bye. Bye. Bye now.